Hello, everybody. I think I'm ready to get started. So let's chat a little bit before we jump into the game. So one thing I've been thinking about since the last time we played Trials, right before we did the new game playthrough, we saw an interesting mechanic that looked like a bug. So for those that might have missed it, when we went into the Sanctuary of Mana on the first playthrough, we did a weird slide attack in the air which is definitely not intended be behavior. I think my goal between now and the end of the game is to find a use for this. So I'm not sure what the conditions are other than a slope, but I'm thinking if we can find a nice wall to behave, it's possible we could use that slide attack to launch ourselves vertically or at least slide up along the wall, depending on if it's allowed to go upwards or not. So. I think our goal today is to hopefully go out of bounds. <laughs> like, like we can generally get through the game. I'm not as worried about that. We have some actually kind of annoying bosses coming up, to be honest. Uh, but I do want to try to break the game in that way. So that's going to be my personal goal. Can I go out of bounds? There was one area I was so convinced I could go out of bounds, and we did not get to it in, this, in the Mana Sanctuary. So let's see if we could redeem ourselves by clipping out while playing the game normally. it Well, normal-ish. <laughs> as normal as I tend to play the games, I guess is a better way to frame that. So let's hop over to full screen. Give the game a second. Make sure my PSO controls are not on, or I'll be very sad. There we go. The blinding white light. Thank you, Trials of Mana. Trials of Mana. Okay, so let's continue our journey. So we were trying out the other characters. We're seeing if a higher difficulty made us feel differently about the game. So we'll be giving, I think, final thoughts once we're done with this particular playthrough. I haven't decided if I'm going to beat, like, the true final boss or do, like, the extra content on this playthrough. But yeah, I think the goal... <laughs> There we go. I was going to say, the character will eek eventually. I'm going to hopefully hear that sound effect as I clip out of bounds. <laughs> That's the, that'll be my goal. So we're coming up to a lot of very vertical levels. In particular, when we get to Gust Hall and the Heaven's Way, I think it was called. Welcome to the Parameter. So my personal goal is to go out of bounds. The game reminding me about the constant dash icon. Again, I don't really get the Welcome. reason why it has to make me input dash again. Like, you would think, Chad, if you if you selected an option called constant, it means that dash is on always, but apparently not. We all escaped Jack, but I heard rumors before we left that the Priest of Light risked his life to put a barrier around Wendell to repel the Beastman. It made his eminence fall so dangerously ill. He collapsed. They say a young priest named Heath is the only one in Wendell who can cure the deadly sickness. But no one knows where he is. This could be bad. What? No, no, Grandpa. This is bad. I, I have to go back. Charlotte, even if we could go back, there's nothing you can do. We have to get the Sword of Mana and find Heath in order to save your grandfather. I know it sounds harsh, but it's the truth. You know that's the only way we can help right now. So dry those tears, okay? So we do see extra scenes now that we have Charlotte in the party. So it's nice to see a little difference between the different cutscenes here and there. We generally know what the plot is since this is not our first playthrough. Golden Road. Hmm. I said I wouldn't go back to Balsena until I defeated that Crimson Wizard. Now I gotta go back without even changing my class. I wonder if there's like a trick to it. Is it just like certain walls potentially could do it? I'm just curious. 
Because we could see, like, there's, like, little ways to kind of, like, tumble and potentially get on platforms we're not supposed to. Like, we saw there, like, we're clearly not meant to fully jump up here. Like, look at where we're standing. So there's definitely, like, a little bit of jank with the, uh, hit detection in this game. And while that's, like, okay to be able to do, I'm curious if there's something I could do... Like, see how we do, like, that little run attack? I wonder if we can... ...somehow wedge ourselves in a corner to do that attack upwards. So anyway, we have to go get the cutscene for Little Cactus, I think. Hey, you haven't seen a weird cactus thing around here, have you? I've been looking all over for it. People say that good things happen when you talk to the cactus, but... ...he's shy. He doesn't stay in one place for long. Hey, you're traveling, right? Keep an eye out for the little cactus. Yeah, yeah, we know about that. Oh! And that was one other thing I was wondering about from the previous session. So let's articulate what I just tried there. So for people that have played the game before and not played the game before, there's a little meter along the bottom of the game's gauges. You can see it's like 143, 132, 112. That is the class strike meter. So normally when we class strike, it locks us into an animation and we have to just kind of watch it. But it looks like, based off of what I was hoping we could do from maybe about two sessions ago, if I do like two light attacks and then hit class strike, the game will kind of remember it, it'll buffer it. So they'll still do the two strikes, but in between I can press the swap button. So I might be able to finally combo with myself. I think that would help with the enjoyment of the game a little bit more. Because I was looking for more depth, mechanically speaking, to like kind of elevate our game. So we played like a very basic, very straightforward game. We were never really first to, forced to learn mechanics on the difficulty we were on. But I think that will maybe alleviate some of my problems with the game AI by being able to tag into them when I'm doing long uh, cutscene attacks. Since being able to potentially uh, do a really long like 9 to 10 second cutscene attack while having full control of another character is a lot of damage. And on top of that, that means that I could build up meter with them, do their cutscene attack, and then just kind of chain it through and through. So it's, it's not too different than like how I would play like East in that sense. It's just that the combat doesn't naturally let you do that. You have to kind of buffer into it. So it's like a little bit of a mechanical difference between the games, but I guess it's kind of nice that it's there. So let me try it again just to showcase. So we're going to do one, two, swap. And see, he did the cross slice. So if I want to, I can go in and do attacks. Unfortunately, I got destroyed by the hoods, but that's fine. Tobin Hood says no. Normally, it looks like this for chat reference. So there's nothing I could do other than watch the cutscene. Okay, we're going to do some very basic stun combos here. Prevent the enemy from doing anything. With that, we're going to try to conserve a little bit of meter. Nice level up. So yeah, there's always just kind of like the little weird things with the game. But as I said before, I wasn't 100% sure how we got that, like, dash kick. Like, see how even here we're kind of clipping into the floor a little bit? Also, I noticed very gradually we are rising. Wait a minute. Uh, I don't think I'm supposed to be able to do that, but that's fine. Just straight up walk up the wall. So I wonder if there's like a little trick to it where I could like rub against a wall long enough and just kind of ascend. Because we saw ourselves gaining height there. So those are kinds of things I want to look for in a game if I want to go out of bounds. Like what are ways I could potentially clip vertically? So I'm not quite getting... There's like one extra ingredient I'm not understanding in this game to clip out of bounds. It's just, like, something extra I have to do. And I get to contemplate that as I murder these poor creatures, because honestly, they stand very little chance against me. Goodbye, Chubbin Hood. Uh, do I feel like using training for anything? Victory MP boost. I probably want this. Although I probably want Int as well. <sighs> Such a tough call. Like, Victory MP boost will help me in the short term. Int will help me in the long term. Maybe just go for Int for now. 
Uh, I think I'm going to teach him Provoke. CS Boost. Yeah, I probably just want to keep raising Spirit on this character to potentially learn uh, Status Cures. So our goal is to essentially find the Little Cactus, and then we're going to go back and find him in other locations. So I only vaguely recall where he was in some locations. Again, we're going to try to do little sidesteps here to avoid the main strikes. As long as I'm actively moving, I shouldn't get punished too badly by the enemy. I should... Ooh, I was going to say, I should dodge that. That was kind of risky to take. Fortunately, that did kill. Hopefully you're doing well in Parameter. We are exploring. What? Was I not up high enough to strike them? That's kind of unfortunate. Rip my HP. I think I made the mistake of doing a jump attack when I was uh, on a lower area and that caused me to whip. Uh, I get rid of poison. Manually heal myself up a little bit. I should get a statue pretty soon to recover MP. So I think it just makes more sense to use that. Got one healing jar there, but I want to use that potentially on the way back. Since I want to experiment with the terrain around here, I think I'm going to clear out the enemies. We are taking a pretty large number of fights compared to what I normally do, because I like to skip encounters. But it might be worth it since we're playing on a slightly higher difficulty. We'll see. It looks like we can also buffer a roll mid-attack, which is kind of interesting. I'm not sure if that'll be useful for anything. Prowls of Eek, indeed. Yeah, I was looking to see if there's, like, any kind of terrain I could just kind of clip on. Or maybe it's only possible with, uh, certain characters. Because it's possible if they don't get enough momentum, they just don't clip. Hmm. Yeah, it could be a Kevin-only thing, in which case I might try to do that separately. Maybe at the end of the stream, I'll mess around with the movement options a bit. Because if you recall last time, he had like a slide that I was able to do in midair. Which definitely seemed very glitchy, but I haven't seen that with the other characters so far. I'm not sure if that works with them. Hopped on PSLO last night, remember what you're doing? Aw. Hopefully you're enjoying PSL. Let's see when a parameter wrote. FE6 rando was unstable for me, kept crashing probably because of what used to randomize it, so I dropped it, but I found a self-randomizing F8 that was stable. Okay. I'm glad you found an alternative, but sorry the initial uh, Fire Emblem randomizer didn't behave as you wanted. Hmm. There is a chest over there. I think there's going to be a forced cutscene around here if I recall correctly. Indeed there is. So yeah, so if I can't break it with these characters, I might go back and play as uh, Kevin briefly. Little little bonus on the stream. This game is just telling me if I find him in different locations, I'll get a prize every five or so. So right now that doesn't do any good for us. In theory, I could walk back to the beginning. Uh, I probably do want to do that. Only because I want to get little cactus out of the way. And if I don't go back now, I could miss the timing later. Well, 
Let's see if we can get some item cleanup. Basically, the only items I'm really looking for at this point is not really equipment. It's just literally cups of wishes. That's about it. If we get anything else, I guess it's nice. But not necessarily game-breaking. Did you see that for a second? He did the wrong attack again. What causes that? That. That's what I want to see. What causes that? How fast do you have to input this? Hmm. Is it every wall I could do this on? So it's like you gotta run for a little bit. And then you gotta you gotta input it pretty quickly afterwards. Like pretty much like you're rolling your fingers across the controls. So at least I sort of know how to do it on demand. It's just the question is like what could I clip out of bounds with? And again, it's like really finicky. You could see that it's giving me the other aerial slice. Like that's the one I wanna see. Because I, I think that could potentially lead to some very weird shenanigans. Okay, so if I buff- I can buffer a jump after an attack, but that doesn't help me. Come on. Hmm. Okay. So we're learning a little bit more about buffers in the game. So I can press buttons in between and the game will remember it. So we could potentially exploit that. Or at least we could do our combos ahead of time. So let, let me see if I do like the equivalency of like a light, light, heavy attack. So let me see how long it inputs it. Oh, it actually input the whole combo, so I'm gonna do- I'm gonna say out loud when I'm pressing it. Light, light, heavy. Okay, so it is kind of like Tekken in that sense, where I can do what they call dial a combo. So I can just preemptively do a whole combo, and then just switch if I need to. So I could potentially do a combo, and then swap into another character in combo. So I could potentially have a very active series of combats if I want to, it to be. It's a little disorienting trying to figure out where they are when I'm dialing the combo. But as long as all the allies are pretty close, I might be able to get them to attack more aggressively. Which has been a big problem, I would say, so far with the AI. Is that they just don't attack as much as you would like. Like, see how he did the power swing while I was still attacking? I could just kind of do this. The downside is I swap where they are so you can't see the combo. Oh, oops. I, I bonked on the pillar. Ooh! <laughs> yeah, there's definitely some weird exploit we could potentially do here. You see how I got more height than I was supposed to? Hmm. Right, chat? Hmm. That's a start. I have to make that a little more practical, though. So I have to find some kind of slope the game doesn't intend for me to climb. If we can mash, do that kind of ability with the other thing, maybe we could go super out of bounds. Or again, maybe it could just be restricted to Kevin, because he had a slide kick, which was pretty long. I'm not sure if the really short animations will work. I don't care if I take damage here. I'm going to go back to town regardless. So we're, we're slowly learning. We're putting together the tools of the game and we're going to learn how to break it little by little. So dial a combo, I think is important for hard mode because our allies need to be like always attacking. And the fact that I can now do combos during class strike, I think opens up that big complaint I had when we first played. Cause I was like, you know, I was so hard stuck on the thought, like if I'm class striking, I can't swap out, but technically I don't have to worry about that. Anyway, the little cactus is over here. I just want to come over here for chat clarity. Eek, eek, chat. There we go. So I would say even like in a casual play standpoint, knowing that you can uh, input the whole combo 
and then immediately swap. Although it won't let me swap in town to showcase. Uh, potentially it leads to a lot more punishment scenarios for the enemy. So when an enemy, for example, becomes stunned, being able to have two characters aggressively attacking instead of just you aggressively attacking is pretty much like a 40-50% damage increase, depending on what they're doing. And then again, if we're able to get that to work with cinematic attacks, then it's just kind of over. So we're going to use the inn and then proceed forward. Welcome. So this is hopeful. So even if these characters specifically can't do what I'm looking to do, I'll say when we get to a certain point, we'll take a small break. And then I want to retry certain areas of the game. Because if you remember in particular, like, Gust Halls, Mana Sanctuary, there were, like, jumps that I was, like, barely not able to do. And I think with that new tech, I might be able to go higher than what a normal jump can do. And then on top of that, I guess I should try jumping again to see if maybe I could get an unintended jump. Because if we're able to get a second jump in the air, that would also break the game pretty heavily. There are several sections in the game that involve you not being able to take a shortcut the first time that you're there. No, I didn't get it there. See, the problem is, like, I don't know how long I'm supposed to run in order to get it to activate. Is it just, like, three seconds? Because if I get that air slice, that's not correct. No. One, two, three, four. And again, it, it might require a small slope in order to work. No. So I'm going to try this one more time. Because I need to get a feel for why this is occurring. But I need him to do the one strike. And I want to see if I could cancel it with anything. But he's not cooperating. So again, it might be like an angle thing. It might be a slope thing. I just want to learn. Interesting, I could do a normal strike again in the air. But I don't know if that'll help me do anything special. This will be faster if we fight together. Okay, let's avoid combat. Actually, this one's going to be kind of hard to avoid. Thought about swapping there, but they're so low and they're so low on health. I don't think it matters. See, it's kind of like somewhere between maybe four seconds of running because it's like one two actually it doesn't even need that much time i wonder why it works sometimes and not others you see how fast i'm getting the lunge attack there so i should just get it here unless there's something specific as i said before about needing to run against the wall sort of like we were running here and slowly getting height try one more time here so i can learn the timing Is it just like that finicky with me? Oh. Yeah, there we go. See, I want to see that. Like, how fast do I have to input this? See, I'm actually hitting the other button, but it's not even registering. Interesting. So again, we might be able to use that to climb up slopes we're not supposed to. So at minimum, we might be able to skip a couple of small uh, backtracks. By just unlocking the shortcut early and skipping the rest of the dungeon. Because sadly, most items in the early dungeons don't really matter. If we really want to get weapon upgrades, it's, we could just buy them at the shops. Okay, so I kind of understand how to do it, but I don't have a practical application yet. Oh, I swapped too slow. There's also one more thing I want to experiment with before we get to our next boss, because we're pretty close to the boss. So if Cat remembers, there is a really, really horrific boss coming up. So I'm kind of delaying until we have to deal with that. I might even level one more time for safety. Uh, what do I do here? I think it's something like...
Can I force them to... Okay, so that was one thing I did want to confirm. So I can't seem to set class strikes this way, or maybe I can. Let's check. Don't keep me waiting. Yeah, it won't let me do it this way. So I don't think I could class strike on demand, but I can Come on. potentially play as this character, for example. Let me get rid of that, actually. And then if I swap to that character, I can force them to heal. He doesn't have any moves yet. Actually, no. I think it's I think it's per character. Yeah, see, okay, so that is per character. So I can put their spells there for quick reference, but I can't seem to make other character spells go there. I can make items go there, so if I want to teach them to use their different slots here. In theory, I could do that, but I'm just assigning it to it directly, so that's a bit unfortunate. Come on. I was kind of hoping it would be more like a Tales of Destiny game where potentially, you know, now that we're a bit more comfortable with the mechanics, we would be able to potentially um, use other people's special moves, so that way I can press a button, have them start a combo, and then I can focus on finishing the combo, and then make them start the combo again. But it looks like that's not quite the case. I'm going to level one more time for a safety reason, because as I said before, this upcoming fight is actually kind of annoying. I'd rather have a little safety health. Okay, I have most of my meter for the boss. I see a chest I could potentially get. Hopefully it's a couple wishes. If not, it'll be fine. Okay, so our meter's looking pretty good for the boss fight. Everybody but Charlotte level. That's kind of unfortunate. So I can make her learn more int so her spells do more damage. Make him focus on provoke. So that way, the AI potentially is fine. Let's get rid of break armor for now. Well... <sighs> See, both of these are really good. Okay, we'll hold on to his ability for now. I think in certain scenarios, I'm going to swap into it. I would like provoke on so that our allies get the ability to free cast. But unfortunately, I really don't want to give up my damage right before a boss. That was a really crucial chest we just picked up. 400 money is pretty big at this point. That was basically like getting 25% of our total cash right there. And that potentially also buys some useful items like elemental buffs. So we're now going to the, sp I was about to say split gap, the stone split gap, where we know something really horrible will happen when we go to cross that bridge. So ideally here, we are going to use a gold statue and restock so we have all of our resources. Just want to try something. Oh, oh, almost. Wait a minute. That looked promising. Oh, like there's just missing like one more move. Do you see what I mean? Like I can't quite land there normally, but I was able to do that with his lunge strike. I want to try something. Because being able to exploit to get items early is kind of interesting. Come on. Come on. I wonder why it fights me so much sometimes. Oh, like if I could just get one more jump. I'll try one more time. And again, the timing on that is really tight. Like I am actually pressing attack, but it's not very generous with me. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, we might be able to do something like that to go places we're not supposed to. Don't keep me waiting. Are other people's attacks a little better at it than Durin's? Durin's is a little awkward. So we have kind of like a slide, right? I wonder if this will work. I think that was our slide attack. 
Yeah, that felt a little different. Again, there's like, you have to kind of run forward like an indeterminate amount of time. And then sometimes it'll work. Like there it was working. Whenever you see me do that slow fall, that's how you know it worked. But again, certain characters might be more abusable than others. Yeah, she's too small, I think, for this to work. So sadly, this might be like a Kevin only trick. Come on. Where like I can kind of do it with Durin, but his lunge doesn't last long enough for me to get like true exploits going. So I'm kind of happy. We went up the wrong way. We we like did we did like a little little baby break. <laughs> like we skipped going around the other way. It arguably didn't save any time, but technically we did something out of order. There's the gold statue I'm looking for. Now Charlotte will level, which is actually kind of huge. Because I wonder if that means like I can actually just skip the boss fight if we get like the right kind of zip. But again, it might only work with Kevin, which will be very sad. But I'm happy that I learned tech today. It does seem like it works. Like I, I get more height than a normal jump. It's just a little finicky, unfortunately. Another cup of wishes. That's actually the most beautiful drop I could have asked for. Thank you, game. <laughs> Getting more revives, which are very expensive in this game, randomly in chests. We will gladly take that. So everybody's level 8, so I got a little bit extra health. I'm going to hope that this will make them not die to get a, like one-shot nonsense, but I, I kind of have low expectations here, to be honest. So for those that don't recall, we're about to fight two golems. And the AI is hilariously terrible at dealing with them. <laughs> Although I'm not gonna lie, if I find a way to clip out into the abyss, that will make me that will make me smile, a big smile. Almost. Yeah, it's like his attack lasts just like just not long enough. I'm I'm really thinking with Kevin I can probably do these. Oh well. A shame that I figured it out a little late. Welcome, Kirk. Hopefully you're doing well. Hmm. I'm kind of not happy she burned half her MP right before the big fight. I'm not gonna lie, that that kind of sucks. It's like it's not. Oh whoa! Do you see me just clip out of existence for a second there? That was interesting. It's like all we need is like a weird angle, like that's just how clipping out of bounds usually works in this game. You find like one little magic wall that's not quite vertical. You just zip out of there. Don't keep me waiting. I'm on. Come on. I'm doing okay, Kirk. I did figure out some tech, but I can't use it, I think, with these characters, sadly. And you can see it's pretty inconsistent. Like, I'm hitting it literally almost as fast as I can hit it. Like, I'm holding up the controller so I could do, like, my index finger on jump and my middle finger on attack. Like, it's that fast. But even then, it requires, like, a weird amount of run. Because if I just do this, like, he'll always do this. But if I, like, run in place for a bit... Then it works, sometimes. Yeah, like, I want to see that lunging stab. So, these characters might not be able to exploit anything, but that gives me some ideas. So, it would not surprise me if people potentially play Kevin just because A, he's overpowered, but B, because uh, his slide attack lasts so long, comparatively. Like, literally two to three times that length. And you saw with, like, barely... <sighs> that doesn't recover MP. You saw with, like, barely any lunge time at all, I was already able to go places I'm not supposed to. So again, potentially I might be able to exploit that to skip a couple of shortcuts. But I don't think it'll be truly as oppressive as if I'd used it in other areas with Kevin. I think Charlotte is too small in order for hers to work, and Angela's is also too short. These the only party members you have available for you right now? Uh, yeah, so you pick the first three characters' decks. 
at the beginning of the game, and that's all we have. So we started a playthrough on hard mode. Although I do not look forward to this boss fight. Wish me luck, chat. I'm feeling this is going to be very atrocious. Who goes there? <gasps> it's the princess. Princess Angela, you are charged with treason and sentenced to death by Her Majesty, the true queen. What? Why? What did I do? Wait. What are you doing? Oh no, Angela! You're a criminal? That's bad! <laughs> Silence you. You are all enemies of the kingdom. Hey! Bring out those magic devices! We'll trap them on the bridge! No joke, I think these are harder than the final boss of the game. Huh? Oh boy. How long do you think my party's gonna last, chat? 8 seconds? 15 seconds? I'm gonna go for maybe 10 seconds. Seriously? You can't finish me here. I'm not going to die in these dirty, wet clothes. No way! Ugh! I will get through this alive. You'll see! Okay, if I can keep one of them distracted, we're in a good time. So right now it's actually going okay. Yeah, that attack is the one that I'm scared of. And our ally died, to no one's surprise. I like how our allies are just not helping me in this fight. Can we talk about this? Like, just straight up, they are doing nothing. Okay, I'm gonna do that to interrupt their attacks, hopefully. I like how our ally complained about that. I'm like, I'm the one fighting both of them at once. Right, Chad? I'm doing all the work. I don't know what they're complaining about. Um, Did you heal her? She's probably going to die randomly. over there we go i think that time i crowd controlled them a little better so that was much more manageable this time around so i still gotta get used to kind of character swapping for the class strike but i did do it there to get extra damage it is a very useful strat oh yeah you sell that line oh tina mage Yeah, there, there's a certain irony about hearing the game complaining about fighting multiple enemies at once. I'm so sorry. This is my fault. It is your fault, Angela. You did just stand there. Leave it to Altanish mages to mess everything up. Uh, well, maybe you should have just collapsed right along with that bridge. <laughs> there we go. Oh, jeez. Get a womb, you two. Ugh. Do either of you dum-dums know why Artana magicians are here? <sighs> wow, Charlotte called him out hard. is preparing to invade other kingdoms to search for the mana stones. If the mages are here, we can bet there's a mana stone nearby. We need to find the Hero King as soon as possible and ask him where the stone and its elemental are. But... Ugh... How are we supposed to get to Valsena without a bridge? The clothes they're wearing is ridiculous. Oh, yeah, it agreed.
I love the Altina mage complaining about the the nation is getting too cold, and then you look at what she's wearing. <laughs> I was like, have you tr have you tried a sweater? Oh well. Maybe there's another route we can use to reach Valsena. We have to stop Altina from attacking somehow. I mean, when you look at this character, do you think Snow Kingdom? I don't know why she's dressed like this. <laughs> but yeah, you could choose three other people. We play it as uh, Kevin the Werewolf. Uh, Hawk the Thief and Reese the Princess of Valorant, I believe. No, or Laurent, Laurent, excuse me. Right now we're trying out uh, the Altinian Mage, the the gladiator who barely seems to do anything with his hometown in Charlotte, the cleric. What? The bridge is down. Oh, I see. Well, have no fear. With my Hyper Deluxe Super Cannon version 2, I can fix all your problems. <sighs> Did you rename it? Oh, never mind that. You need to come into my backyard again. Lickety split. Parameter saying Charlotte is the smartest one here. Sadly, maybe. I know. The, I it it was really funny. They're like, the, the weather's getting colder. I'm like, no wonder why they need the kingdom to have eternal spring. <laughs> if this is what they wear in their like day to day lives, no wonder why they're complaining about the cold. <laughs> it's like, duh. You don't need magic to solve that problem. It's called layers. Get more layers. So caught up in making this that I plum forgot about ignition fuel. Nitromite! I need nitromite to fire this up. Think you can grab some for me? I've got too much work left on my next invention to get it myself. You'll be fine. Fuel, huh? Huh. <sighs> We supposed to get that? I don't know. Let's just ask someone in town. <laughs> I like her running like we hands like to the side like that. So silly. What do you have to say, old man? Nitromite? Pretty sure dwarves use the stuff in the mines to dig tunnels. I'm surprised we need more information than that. We already know where the dwarves are, but I guess the game, we have to hit a certain minimum number of triggers, I suppose. Go to Dwarf Village. There's a secret entrance in Stone Split Gap just before the bridge. That's all I know. Was there really a hidden entrance in Stone Split Gap? I just hope we can find it. Whoa! Eek chat. So yeah, we don't really care about any of the equipment here. I think I'm good for healing. This upcoming boss is really not that hard. It just might be a bit long if I don't get certain weak points. The game reminding you that if they have the little blue icon, if you don't do power attacks, you will do reduced damage until you break their shield. I'm on the job. Come on. So I think for the most part, I'm going to control Durin directly. Just because I want our main damage dealer in melee to be kind of fine-tuned slash controlled by me. I love her just throwing out spells though, that is kind of funny to me. So if we could get her MP totals much higher, we're going to be in a much better position. So I could get Spirit for the sake of getting victory MP, just so that she could slowly recover. <sighs> but I think... I don't know if Limit Break is worth it yet. Limit Break is, like, good when we have roll stats. Right now, like, 5% would be, like, 2 damage, but, like, int plus 5 would be better, because we actually have roll power to go with it. 
And if we're going off a of spell power, let's say that only impacted spell power, which we know is 50 from earlier. 5% of 50 is not as good as in 5, because it seems like every point of int is damage, if not more. So... I guess the thing I need to ask myself here is... Can I afford to get rid of her abilities yet? I feel like with HP up, she generally hasn't died. So I'm just going to slowly pump her in. It will result in her doing a little less damage early on, but it's probably for the best in the long term. Oh, I was hoping to get a good combo. <laughs> or like she said you wish to that. She knew. Yeah, if I could do that little stun combo... Might lead to big damage, like that. Nice little level up. Uh, I probably just want to raise her int again. Again, the more damage we could get now, the better. I guess there's not many enemies right now that I have to worry about magic damage. Magic damage will be relevant in a little bit. It's probably better just to take the free damage early. Uh, probably just want to boost your healing. Hmm. Do I lower her MP so she gains more class gauge? Probably not right now. Kind of like our current setup. And I probably want to give him strength and stamina, if I had to guess. Yeah, let's give him some strength. Because he is our damage dealer. So you need to make sure he skills. Then we'll actually give him stamina, just because of the fact that I want the AI to be able to tank with him if I'm not playing as him. Yeah, because you can already see that our damage is pretty good. Like, we're doing 17s and 26s to, like, 12s. So the strength ups are slowly mattering. The more levels we get, the more MP we get, so I'm not as worried about that. Oli does uh, more damage against the zombies, so let's get that type weakness. It's pretty noticeable. Nice level up for Charlotte there. So I think we'll go the intended direction this time. I mean, I guess in theory I could go the other way, but like, what does that really offer me at the end of the day? I don't think anything I want right this moment. We're going to be going to the night market later, which is the next area. If I could visit the town now, I actually would, but right now I know we can't due to plot reasons. So I don't think it's worth going over there yet. So we're sitting on a lot of class strike gauge. Hopefully that'll mean some encounters will go super fast. Yeah, like, could you imagine if I saw, like, a wall like this, Chad, and, like, we're just kind of here, and then I do, like, that quick attack? Like, if, if we just had, like, a slightly longer run attack, I think we could go up that wall. I don't have time for this. There we go. Retreat. Dwarf tunnel is supposed to be around here, right? I finally get to work out. See this wall here? It's actually an illusion made with refracted light. Go cool, huh? You know, they used to call this place Gem Valley because of all the crystals in the rock walls. The crystals are how the dwarves disguise the entrance. Here, look. This big rock looks normal, but I can shine my light to nullify the illusion. I know you want to see, right? Ta-da! Here's what the entrance to Dwarf Tunnel really looks like. Now get in there! Oh yeah, we have some of the elemental spirits with us. That was Lumina. We'll be getting more as the game continues. I guess Fairy's technically not an elemental spirit, maybe. But yeah, they all have an assortment of very goofy voices. Some more goofy than others. 
Welcome to the Dwarf Village. A village of dwarves. Here? I never imagined there was so much to discover outside the castle. Come on, let's buy some nitromite. I love them all calling us top soilers, by the way. They're like, oh, top soilers. Hmm. So we can't do anything here yet. Talk to Charlotte in the main town. She says, well, it's so moody in here. I think mushrooms are going to start sprouting out of me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we want to do some side passageway checks. Maybe we could get extra money. Take a honey elixir, that's a full heal. So, so far we're actually doing pretty well in terms of items. Like, I bought about 30 candies. So that way the AI can just burn through those. And yeah, we still have an okay amount of our other items. So, so far not really in a panic mode for anything. I haven't decided this playthrough if I'm gonna bother buying armor. I don't really think it was necessary in normal mode. Unless I want our ally to maybe live longer. Maybe. I'm not even sure that would guarantee they live. We're getting chocolates, which is a good heal. Okay, so they're talking about they don't have much use for weapons, yet they have a weapons store, so we're going to go check that out. Well, all these wares are good picks. Hmm. This is good quality. Ooh, but you know. I'll make use of this. I think they make boss battles a little faster. I'll get the weapon upgrades. Even though they aren't, like, super huge. We at least have enough spare money that I could do that. Come again. Potentially doing, like, six more a hit is kind of big. And speeding it up, because we're only doing, like, 12 at the moment. So this is dwarven quality, huh? Get a load of the edge on this thing. Let's see what you have to say, Unum's Keeper. Yeah, watch the shopkeeper got a job to do. The tunnel's a mess further in. Hoo Let me tell you. You know, uh, there's a lot of monsters, so you, uh, should buy some items first. <laughs> I am minding my shop. Well, on that note, welcome! All these wares are good picks. So we still can't buy chocolates, which is a bit of a shame. Oh wait, hold on. An actual use for escape rope? <gasps> I did it, chat. I was complaining about that last time. I have a reason to use it to save time. It is to go back to the entrance of the village. Look at that. Although actually I don't need to go out that way, so it didn't save time. But hey, it's nice to know that it works in towns. Oh well. Now, looking for watch, huh? Well, it ain't further down the tunnel. Uh, give me a sec. I'll, uh, I'll make a path for you. <laughs> You're welcome! But it is amusing we can use that in towns. Yeah, I was gonna say, I, I saved no time on that one. If I have to go back to the entrance there, which is where I thought it wanted me to go, that would have saved me time. Yeah, otherwise most of the time it kind of just zips you to where you need to go. Which is like, I think is a good thing. I don't want to necessarily be stuck really deep in a dungeon, like in Wild Arms. But at the same time, it feels mostly pointless to have escape rope. There's like a couple of times. Oh, yeah, thanks for giving it back to me. There's only a couple times I can think of where I'm like, oh, maybe I could save some time going back. But as I said before, most major cutscenes will move you to the next destination automatically. I did not dodge fast enough. Okay, our damage is looking a little better, despite them being higher level. Tamed to candy, that's not too bad. Uh, do, 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 do. We need to find a little cactus eventually. Question. <laughs> How good are we at zipping up vertical walls with this character? No. 
Come on, behave yourself. Do what I want you to do. No. I'm gonna try it for a few times. It is worth experimenting in case we do get it. So if chat's wondering what I'm doing, if they missed it earlier, we have this little lunge attack, but after running an indeterminate amount of time in a direction, you could use it in the air, which is not intended. But he seems to be very finicky with me at the moment, sadly. That time he didn't even attack. Like, the timing is very tight. Like, I have to roll my fingers across the buttons. Level of input of speed. But he's not behaving. Let me try right here. Maybe because he's, like, moving slightly, it doesn't work. Like, he just has to run for a little bit. Like, see how he's, like, slightly moving? I need him to not move. Like, maybe this is also fine. Or not. He'll just not attack. Nope. We'll try two more times, and I'm gonna give up on this. So that was too fast. That was still too fast. No. Okay, so he's not gonna cooperate. That's fine. We gotta practice that, because we do get a lot of unintended height in the game, which is kinda nice. It would potentially save me needing to run through these fights. So me failing that like two or three times is not necessarily bad because we lose a lot of time in these battles regardless. So being able to skip that would be kind of crucial. Because like look comparatively how long it takes for me to get by that one encounter. Yeah, I'm watch. Who's asking? Oh, you want nitromite? I got some here. It'll cost you though, five thousand lucre. I think we might get something special if we can afford it, but I don't have that much money because I'm not grinding. <laughs> not an easy mark, huh? Hmm, fine, I can give you a discount. How's three thousand lucre sound? <sighs> In theory, I could go resave and get that, but I think we're still gonna say no. There's no deal then. <laughs> Hang on. Um. Oh wait, I ain't got time to chat. I'm looking for Gnome, our patron elemental. <laughs> uh, he ain't nowhere to be found. There's just been so many dang quakes and rumbles down here. Mm. I came to check on Gnome, but he was gone. Oh, what a mess. No time to waste. I'll be deeper in the caves looking for Gnome. No, wait! He's gone. Hey! We're not done here! Oh, how dare he run off like that! We have to try and bargain with Watts. Don't let him get away! <sighs> The day-night cycle stopping me from inputting. That was rude. Besides, I'm still a little worried that no one is missing. There we go. Feeling that I just can't shake. Leave it to me, Wookies. Again, that the the input on that is kind of weird. I wonder if there's like a visual cue for number of steps, because like normally you could just dash attack immediately. But that's not how it seems to work against the wall. Like, I have to be moving for at least a little bit. But then sometimes he just refuses to attack like that. Or he'll do his aerial strike. Gotta practice it. It's the enemy. Yeah, let's ignore that encounter. There's no man around, pretty much. So I don't think I need anything too crazy from this place. So the goal is to just ignore encounters. Most of them are not worth fighting at this point. I kind of want to jump down just to try that again. I just want to try one thing here. We kind of did it to gain height, but that's not what we need. So there, there seems to be like a little bit of a... A little bit of a trick to it. We can also do attacks in the air to extend our jump height. So if we need to be vertical for a little longer, we can move horizontally and hover with the strikes. Like that. Whereas I don't think I could normally make that without doing that, for example. Yeah, see, I'm not able to do that without that tech. So there's like little minor ones that I think are intended, and then there's ones that are definitely not intended. 
The game behaves very weirdly when you do it. I don't have time for this. I do want to see what that treasure is. Unfortunately, took a lot of damage there. Where was that at? Oh, I got. I ended up on the upper platform again by accident. That's not what I wanted. Uh. You know what? I'm gonna kill you because I have to come back through here anyway. So I do want to potentially come this way if I want the chest. What was over here? I imagine it's just chocolate or something dumb. Oh, actually, a couple wishes is good. That's like getting 250 cash. We're only getting like about 20 per battle. So that saves us time later. Even though that was a backtrack. There we go, another little cactus found. Yeah, there's like some kind of... Some kind of input trick to getting it more consistently. It's not as straightforward as you think it would be. It's like you could do it too quickly and too slow. Like there we started to do it. So maybe I have to just kind of... Maybe I could time it based off of when he puts the sheath away. Okay, that's not a bad visual cue. Hmm. Come on, let's help each other. Oh, I got tagged. Unfortunate. I want to rebuild meter on this fight. That's my goal. So let's get up to 100 or so. Be close. No. Ooh. Yeah, see, he started doing some weird things on the clip there. So it seems like when you do the lunge attack, you can find, like, a foothold in places you're not supposed to get. So I want to try that to skip something later in the game. Right now, I don't think it matters. This is just practice before we do some serious applications. Stuck in the wrong animation. Unfortunate. Hmm. This will be faster if we fight together. Oh no. Like how the game is giving me and it's about healing items. Cute. They're in a way I can't really escape this easy. This is actually kind of annoying with where they're targeting. There we go. Because if you attack, it makes the meter reset on the escape. So it does actually become very annoying. So I could get like one dodge roll safely. But after that, it's kind of eh. Later in the game, we could cut down the time it takes to retreat from combat. And that makes escaping combat really nice. So I don't have to deal with any of that. I almost touched the encounter. Almost. Out of my way before I break you. Hmm. Fine then. Here I go. Elevator. We're doing okay damage. Lots is out there somewhere. Let's go. Don't blow it. I've got it. Okay, that should be GG for that enemy. Is there anything even worth taking in here? I don't think there is. I'm just looking for a chest mostly. Okay, there is a chest over there.
Hmm. That was a weird hitbox. I didn't think I was standing in it, but that's fine. Leave these guys real quick. Now I'm at 200 meter across pretty much all the characters, which is perfect right before a boss battle. And I got another revive. You know what? That's good, because our allies will probably use on average at least two a boss fight. I have no faith in their survival. MP restore right before the boss. That's kind of nice. Okay. So, we're going to go into the very obvious boss arena. Is there anything I want to change before we go into this boss fight? Uh, increase her spirit. Should improve her healing, I think. And also give the ability to cure status ailments, which is more useful in overworld travel. Hmm. So I do have her as protection as paramount. That's probably fine. I probably just want Durin to face tank, so I'm just going to tell him to all out attack in case they swap out of him. So hopefully with different levels of aggression, it'll feel kind of nice. So my goal here is to basically use Class Strike to dodge big boss moves and hopefully swap out during that in order to optimize damage. Where'd this hole come from? Oh, I got a bad feeling about this. Did you hear that? I ain't gonna stick around. <laughs> Later! Here comes the Jewel Beast chat. No way! I'm not gonna let this thing eat us up. <laughs> I pressed the wrong button. That was my bad. I deserve that. So I'm going to do that. So our ally died again. What happened to our ally focusing on defense, by the way, chat? I'm pretty sure... You know what? Let's heal her before she dies. She would have died there, by the way, had I not done that. Thanks, allies. I appreciate you not focusing on the defense. Uh, just heal her. I don't trust the allies to heal themselves, given what just happened. We do that to dodge. It's a meter back. I got two class strikes out, which isn't too bad. I'm on the job. <laughs> okay, its rear seems to be its weakness. So I'm just gonna keep attacking it in its butt, because apparently that works. Look how much more damage that is. Weakness found. Should have swapped out. That was my bad. I missed an opportunity there. Ooh. Okay, so I needed to run first. So that's one thing I'm not quite sure. It's a little weird when the camera angle goes like that. It's hard for me to tell, like... So that's, like, it's barely... I have to take a couple steps. But it's, like, barely not rollable. So if I take, like, a little run there, I could get out of the way. Uh, why don't you just candy yourself real quick? I tried to swap there. I got a little unlucky. So I gotta be careful here because I can't dodge this. With, uh, Clustrix. That I can. 
So if I go kind of inside, I could dodge it more consistently. So that time I just used everybody's class strike. I think we could agree that went pretty well. Oh, just like one tap from killing. There we go. So that time I chained the class strikes there. I got the double slash into the uh, jumping slip attack. And that did pretty much like 40% of the boss. Well, like 33% of the boss's health. So if I'm able to cancel it quickly, that does result in a lot of damage when the boss is done. So I think that's worth some... I think that's worth a little more practice getting comfortable with uh, buffering the combo into the swap. Everyone doing all right? Woo. <laughs> so that's the legendary subterranean monster jewel eater. Well, I'll be. Oh, the tunnel entrance you know as Stone Split Gap, we call Gem Valley. They say that Jewel Eater only surfaces in the valley once every 1,000 years. <laughs> you all are lucky. He didn't say you are. That said y'all. Silly text. <laughs> what in tarnation is going on? <laughs> well, my ears done started burning. <laughs> <laughs> no, not another goofy voice. Well, of course I'm all right. See? There I was, just taking a nap, minding my own business, when Jewel Leader done come out of nowhere and dug a burrow straight through my bed. If I hadn't woken up, I'd have been that monster's lunch. <laughs> Whew. Ooh, that ain't nothing to laugh about. Uh, Gnome, we need your help. Oh, if it ain't fairy! <laughs> Been too long, sister! <laughs> With the power of the elementals, we can open the portal to the Sanctuary of Mana. Please? Well... I ain't one to turn down a request from an upstanding lady like yourself. <laughs> Leave it to me, miss. Contain the powers from Earth Elemental Gnome. That's going to teach me all the abilities I won't really get. I don't have Stone Saber yet. Protection not relevant. Diamond Shards is... So we could get more elemental variety potentially on Angela, who's our black mage equivalency. Ooh, it requires learning stamina. Oh. <laughs> right, chat? Oh. This guy is a jump king? Yeah, I wish we had the same jump height as him. Just springing all over the place. Hmm. Probably just want to do int for now. Okay, so I'm probably not going to take much in spirit unless he gets something crazy. I think in the short term, I'm going to treat him more as like an AI. Let's give him defense and HP, which is stamina. So I'm hoping this combination will let him tank so I don't need to babysit him. Um, I honestly don't know if I want any of these other abilities. Close call, 20% more healing when allies, 30% are below. That could be useful. I'm going to wait a little bit to the next class upgrade. I think I'm actually not going to spend any more training points on her. So we level up again at 16 to get to a new class. So I'm going to hold on to the remainder of her points. Hey, there, are there any things I missed here? No, it looks like we got a little blue urns. That's fine. <laughs> You guys are friends with the great and powerful gnome. Uh, 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 you know, uh, I'm sorry for being so uh, rude earlier. <laughs> uh, here, uh, you can have the nitromite on the house. Oh, don't you worry about it. No charge. <laughs> Tain nitromite. Here. I'll send you right back to the entrance to Dwarf Tunnel with this magic rope. Do you see what I mean, though, Chad? Like, most of the time they just send us places. <laughs> you all take care now. Oh, uh, give my regards to Gnome. 
So Rip actually using escape rope. Wow, he sent us all the way back here. That's kind of crazy. Now we have the item that we need. I'm just going to save here since we restored our HP anyway. Don't keep me waiting. I'm going to do something like... Oh, I teleported her out. Of oh, you can teleport them. Oops, I don't want to do that. I got to be careful. So it's good when they're all surrounded, but I can force them to teleport where they're not fighting anything. See that? We're learning the nuance of the teleport swap. So... Useful when they're fighting a boss, not as useful in general combat, unless they're already fighting something. But again, our allies are kind of derpy, so they'll just kind of stand around sometimes and not really face an enemy. Just gotta be a little careful. So, let's head back to Von Voyage's place. Those Altana mages better watch their backs. <laughs> like how he's just constantly putting down Altina when we have somebody from their nation in our party. That's super awkward. He's basically going like, darn those Snow Kingdom mages, how dare they? We'll show them. And she's like, did you forget I'm here? <laughs> oh, I was hoping our ally would interrupt the attack. I can see our damage is definitely much better. So she was doing 56 with that before the weapon upgrade. She's doing 120 after just a little bit of int plus weapon upgrade. Yeah, so even on hard mode, which is what we're playing on right now, I'm two-shotting with this equipment. It's already a big improvement compared to earlier. Yeah, we're earning about 26 cash a battle. So keep in mind, they went through, what was it, two revives? That would have been 500 cash. So put that in perspective of how many battles I'd have to do just to go even on the revives alone. Which is why I get excited when we see the revives as random items. So I do not want to pay for that. You can see we're gaining about 80 XP a fight, by the way. We need 2,000 to level. So needless to say, we uh, are not really going to level anytime soon fighting these encounters. So where it makes sense, we'll try to skip them. The game recommending try chatting with your party if you see them around town. Because once you enter a town, they disband. They can be found anywhere within the town. I'm like, thanks, game. A little late for that, but that's fine. So now that we have the Nitromite, we should be able to hand it back into the guy. Bon voyage. Who are you? Excuse me. Yeah, bon voyage. Excuse you? We risked our lives to get your stupid Nitromite, and you forgot about us? Oh, right. I didn't forget. I just couldn't remember. <laughs> so, um, what's that nitromite for again? <laughs> I'm kidding. I remember now. It's for my revamped cannon, right? <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Head to the backyard and I'll meet you there. Okay. So now that the bridge was blown out, uh, we have an alternate means of getting to the other kingdom so we can talk to the Hero King for advice. Which is kind of funny because that's where we started our story, but oh well, the backtrack is, in is intensifying. So I believe we're going to be shot to the... Moors? This is the revolutionary ultra-fabulous turbo cannon number two! Wind shear? Check. Targeting. Check. Uh, locked on to Volsena. Ready?
get across this coal ridden field? What is wrong with this place? Aren't there easier paths we can take? Let's save now that we're in the Mulbear Moors. What is wrong? No other way to get to Falsena. Gotta grin and bear it. Fine. But once we meet with the Hero King, I'm filing a complaint about this path. Okay, let's kill this enemy. I want to try something against the wall here. This this feels to me like a strong candidate for clipping out of bounds. We have a lot of really weird walls all next to each other. And I just need time to practice without having these things interrupting me. So see how there's like this little wedge here? Like this is like the perfect thing to potentially go over. Oh! 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 Are we going out of bounds? Is it happening? Wait a minute, hold on. Hold on, chat, this is a new development. Oh, we- oh, we're so close to going out of bounds. Well, we definitely zipped where we were not really supposed to. So I needed to- So we gotta go, like, more here? Come on, go out of bounds. Yeah, that looked very promising. Oh, just gotta get him to do that strike. Yeah, it's possible that... Oh, so unfair. Oh, look how high he goes! Look at that, he's like, wee. <laughs> okay, let me try something. Yeah, you can see we could get hilarious more height than we're supposed to. Come on. Oh, so, so I can roll cancel it, maybe. Yeah, that was... Oh, it's so close. You know what, chat? I want to try something. Let's save here. I want to come back here on another save file. We're gonna we're gonna put like a little pause. Don't blow it. I've got I want to try it with one other character just to see, because I feel like that's exactly what you do to clip out of bounds. So let's save here. I'm gonna reload another save just to test something, and then we're gonna go right back to the main playthrough. Ah, right. so we're gonna make a little save here. Because I have a feeling we're going to do something the game will really not like. <laughs> something tells me, chat, I will do something the game really does not like. So we're going to make a little save so I don't have to do this again. And we're just going to experiment. We're taking a little detour to see like a little what if. So like what if I came here the first time, but I was playing with Kevin, who has a much longer dash attack. So let's go ahead and make another save down here. Just to differentiate where it is. So same strategy as before. Enemies are just slightly higher level. We can ignore them. Where? I think it was over here. Come on. Oh, he gets so much height. Look how much height he gets, chat. He can almost do it. Oh, see, there's somewhere he gets a little bit and somewhere he gets more. So I think the angle matters a little bit. Whoa. Yeah, he definitely gets more height than the other character. So maybe I have to aim towards that for max height. Although, come on, do the dash attack. I think the hard part is more just getting him to do the right move. Come on, you can do it. Again, I'm not really sure why sometimes he just refuses to do it. We saw that I just did it like three times in a row. I'm not doing anything different timing-wise. There must be something about the way he hits the terrain. So yeah, we could definitely get to points we're not supposed to. Is it possible from like here he could slide upwards? Almost. Hmm. I wonder, I'm going to go back and test this later off stream, because this will probably take a little bit of attempts. But clearly something weird happened. But I'm not sure how to take advantage of that yet. Or if it's easier to do from the other side to clip out of bounds, for example. So we're going to test this a little bit and we'll go back to our regularly scheduled playthrough. Oh yeah, yeah, see I don't get height there. So it's only specifically this area that seems to give us big height. Huh. 
Alright, one more time. Hmm. See, even I can't go out of bounds here. I wonder if an earlier version of the game let me go out of bounds. Because this feels like I should have been able to do that. Because I, I can almost clear the max jump height there. Is there some other thing I can do before we go back? One more attempt. Oh, actually, I stood on something there. If I didn't press a button, I think I would have been out of bounds. Yeah, there's like a little bit of a wall up there. So he definitely gets more height than Durin. But there's something, there's something like a little bit off. Okay, so let's not let's not waste any more time. We're we're gonna experiment off stream. But clearly, I found something that's very suspicious. I think we can all agree that looks very promising. We'll come back to that later. That'll be homework for me. The wall is sloped. You're sliding up it a little bit. So it's it's kind of like a combination. Like it, there's a certain angle the wall has to be to get extra height. But also at the same time, there has to be like a place I could potentially jump over. So like if you see like here, like the wall is kind of coming towards me. So it, it stops me from going too high. But from here, the wall's inwards a little bit. And maybe just that little bit of a difference is all that it needs for it to behave differently. And we can see I don't get as much height as uh, Kevin. So I imagine with Kevin I could probably go out of bounds, but with this character I cannot. Which is a shame. So if we come across any other weird anomalies with the terrain, I think we'll uh, experiment with them with the other character. The game really eat my input by changing day-night cycle. That was rude. Because potentially here, like, see how there's, like, this little path up here? Like, if we could find, like, just, like, the right kind of wall, it's possible we could slide up the wall. But again, it's, like, getting the right kind of angle is not easy. Is it that? That's pretty vertical. I need one where it kind of goes back a little bit. So we have a general idea of what we could potentially look for, because that could lead to shortcuts. Anyway, we'll ignore these fights for now. I don't need them. We'll take this blue jar, though. Bonk. So that's promising. That's the start of really breaking the game. But it, it does feel like our characters are not quite equipped. Like, this rock, for example, is facing away from us. So I'm not sure if we could slide up this one. Or again, if there's just like something special about the wall that'll work. Assuming he will cooperate with me. Game, please. Kind of, but not really. Yeah, there's there must be just like certain magic spots where the collision is just right. Because that wall was technically facing away from us, but it could be like the angle of the invisible walls that we can't see that count for collision. Hmm. Anyway, we got something to test later. I don't have time for this. Stop. Stop. I think we'll take that easy kill here. At least the Holy Bolt seems to be basically one-shotting. Wow, that respawn rate is insane. How did they already respawn? Game, please. I literally just killed them and turned around and they were respawn. That, that's a little intense for respawns. I was, ho I was hoping to not have to fight them on the way back. Well, Bear Claw is not a bad item. So we can't do anything with this. Later on, we should be able to, though. Yeah, because, like, in theory, if we can master, like, the terrain... So, like, what could have happened is if I launched myself vertical enough, it's possible I could have just walked around the outside of the level. But, yeah, that's something I'll practice. Maybe next stream we'll do it. Showcase something neat. But, hey, this is where learning takes place. 
where we're learning learning to gradually break a game to see its limits and what kind of things we could do with it. And I think some of it has to do with the fact that when you do like the lunge attack, that you kind of put yourself further forward than normal. So I think that's why we're also getting that kind of goofy animation. Because there's certain rocks where like you can see like I'm not able to touch it even though I'm jumping at it. But when I lunge, I briefly get a little closer. So I think a combination of those two things is allowing us to do some interesting things to the game. So the enemies are slowly catching up to us in level. Should kill like a couple, but not like a lot. Must have taken out all the enemies nearby. There we go. Nice and simple kills. Go for an easy stun combo there into big damage. Bonk. Or our ally doesn't hit. Thank you. Thanks, ally. I appreciate when they just stood there while I did the combo. Didn't decide to attack. Appreciate that. Uh, but anyway, we got some money. Hmm. So I think the bottom path will just lead us back to the other choice we could have taken. I'm more interested what happens if we come over here. That's are pretty easy XP, I might as well get them. Oh, the game healed me. I'm like, I don't care about my HP total. As long as it's not zero, we're fine. There we go, this is looking for. I love how far away I can activate that treasure chest, by the way. Do you like that, Chad? I'm like two character heights away from them. Still able to activate. Yeah, the encounter rate here is a little silly. I'm not sure why they're allowed to respawn that quickly. Let's see where this leaves us. There's more than one I could go to. Okay, so this is a different hole. That's what I'm looking for. We could do little jump rolls to kind of delay our getting struck by them and still escape. Since meleeing does shorten the amount, or meleeing does slow us from retreating, but rolling doesn't slow us very much. Twisted wrong. Huh. We're having more magic damage is fine. So that saves us a little bit of money. I know what to do. So I could do that to kind of dodge the enemy. Oh, now that was a nice air attack. There is a lock-on mechanic with the game, but I'm not a big fan of it. If Chad is curious. It's magical. Uh, what was down here? Treasure chest, okay. I'm gonna do this to break all their guards simultaneously and kill a bat. That'll make my life really easy comparatively. Oh, slightly too slow on this stun. I got punished. Power. What can I say? I'm a natural. 
Okay. So I think we attained everything that I want to get. We still have to get the little cactus, which is in this area. It's definitely important to get because being able to retreat from combat faster is a pretty strong ability. Since there's gonna be come there's gonna be several points of the game where I basically don't want to get into any encounters whatsoever. So I believe I could check for items down here, but I believe the little cactus was further. We haven't passed it yet. Oh, so that would put me down there. Oh, never mind. We don't want to go that way. Don't blow it. I've got this. Goodbye. Goodbye, enemies. Let's try not to get into more combat. Let's go this way. That, tr that little gap be between the tree is apparently too small for us. And then we clearly fit there, but that's fine. Uh... Let's take a go for the treasure chest that's over there. Leave it to me, Wookiees. I hit the edge of the arena, which stopped me from rolling. That was so rude. I will say, from a visual clarity standpoint, I would have appreciated seeing like a very light line of where the boundaries were. I went to roll past the enemy, and it was like, no, thou shalt not roll. Thou shall hit the wall and die. <laughs> so much for dodging. Okay, so we're ignoring those encounters. And I believe our optional goal is to the right. So if instead of going left, which is our destination, we go this way, we should be able to get the other little cactus. got a little injured, but I can heal ourselves up pretty quickly. So I probably want to go up here. I'm like just barely not able to get it. Come on. Save us a little bit of time, please. Come on, do it. Save us time. Come on. Do your do your dash attack. Stop doing your normal swipe. Him, please. One day, chat. One day he'll obey what, what buttons I'm inputting. Seriously, what is the timing on this for this to work? Does he not like the angle? Is it too steep or something? Hmm. Okay, so I'm not sure why he was not doing it from the other position, but whatever. Can we seriously not go up that little gap? I, I feel like we should be able to land there, Chad. I don't know about you. That is not really a big jump to make. Of course, the game is not doing the attack I want. Almost. See, if there's some way I can cancel his, like, sheathing animation into, like, normal jump, I think we'll make a lot of progress with this. Try one more time. I at least want to see him do the dash attack. Then I'll be satisfied. Come on. So again, there's like something that's like not straightforward into what causes this. Like, I don't know if it has to be like he has to run in place for a while. Yeah, tumbling didn't help there. That's what I was curious about. I got ambushed. Oh, and our allies knocked all the enemies away. Thank you, game. Appreciate it. So yeah, I think with this character it might not be possible to do the jumps I was thinking of. Because if he can't make this little gap, then I, I don't think I can make the ones I actually want to try later. Do you know what I mean? Because that is like not a very big jump height. I have to go like maybe a character head taller. It's a little disappointing. But anyway, let's go over here. Hmm. 
The little cactus was around here somewhere. So you have to keep an eye out. Pick up some items for later. gonna keep spamming my power attack. Knocking them out of the air is important. Got a chocolate, not bad. Yeah, there's a couple areas where we can get to unintended places without using that little jump trick. Hmm. I mean, at least our damage is good enough, even on hard mode. So we're about the right level for this area. Hmm. We're still looking for something. I'm not seeing it. Okay, there's the little cactus. Let's get you out of the way. And then I think if we go into the other entrance, we'll be able to get a fifth one. So that way we can determine how many treasure chests we have found or not found. It's not like incredibly, incredibly helpful. It's just kind of a nice to have. I more want the ability to double and triple experience. So I have to go over this way regardless, since this is an optional area. We're just gonna pop these. Maybe we'll get some useful items. Six money is absolutely not worth it. Candies are okay. Our allies tend to burn through those pretty quickly. There's the little cactus that I'm looking for. And so now we can hit a just a symbol button and we can see how many that we have or don't have. 45 more to go. So now if I do this. I can see that I missed a treasure chest somewhere. You can see that there's one over there. So for completionists, it's there. Although I think I missed the bonus ability for not being able to pay for the other person. That's fine. I don't think that ability would have been relevant for a playthrough. So, yeah, so sadly, the game did think about us exploiting this. I was really curious if we could have jumped on the rope, but just to showcase the chat. They, they did put a very big invisible wall there to stop me from exploiting anything. It's a bit unfortunate. I mean, what's wrong with a little bit of clipping out of bounds, right, chat? What's the worst that can happen? Just go sailing into the abyss? Hmm. Okay, so I got everything I came for. So I think what we'll do, chat, we'll keep it a little shorter today. <laughs> I have to prepare myself mentally for uh, the door. The door boss is atrocious. So we're going to make sure we get at least up to the night market today. We'll see where we go from there. Come on. Let's help each other. Nope. I am not interested in that fight. No, thank you. So our goal here is to basically skip all encounters. I'm already a very good level. Uh, I don't really need more. Ooh, they're kind of blocking the path. That's kind of annoying. Yeah, we, we got places to go, plot to do. Let's move forward. So there's one treasure chest of this entire place that I missed. That's so sad. I tried. There we go. Every time I get caught, I feel sad. All right, we'll clear your way. Leave it to me. Run! 
There we go. We got through it eventually. Hit an enemy with power or charge. The enemy will drop particles that refill your CS gauge. Eh, we kind of do that. The town has had better days, John. What happened? Hang in there. <sighs> Altina Mages attacked. His Majesty is in danger. What? Finally made it to the kingdom of Alsena, only to find it in shambles from the attacking Altanish forces. Well done. Release the magical creatures into the castle and fall back for now. Yes, sir. That's so somebody copy pasted the guards everywhere. They're actually just all related. Valsena? We have to stop the Crimson Wizard and save the Hero King before it's too late. Yeah, I know. I wish I had the short range teleport. There are mages from Altina here, too. <sighs> it's okay. She's only fainted. Regardless, no one else should be sacrificed to this fight. We have to stop them. Hang in there. Uh, uh, no, leave me. I can heal with the mana stench. Don't worry. Go on ahead. Protect the king. I have no idea why they thought that would be a good sound filter. I really don't understand. That's okay. Yeah, that teleport is nice. I like that little after image he's kind of got going on when he does it. I like the visual feel for it. Hmm. <laughs> There's the eek. We were overdue for an eek. I really do not want to fight those robots, by the way. No, thank you. Uh, which do I feel is less horrible to bump into? I think I could go this way and skip a couple fights, maybe. Hmm. The game really wants us to fight robots. No, thank you. Those are just going to kill the party members. They are too tanky, their shield is too high, and they do too much damage. I would rather fight the wizards. I'm already not fighting the wizards. Anyway, we'll just ignore the giant chest pieces. Don't think that was worth it for a chocolate. Hmm. I'm on the Come on. I think I could buy them if I. Well, not if they do that. That's unfortunate. Wow. I got wedged between them. I'm just gonna kill them at this point, actually. Also, I love that they went from like level 13 outside to level 15. But their XP is quite terrible, as you can see. 119 is not worth it. The outside enemies we were fighting before gave us, I think, 200 ish for like really easy kills. So if I really... Oh, there's the Wiggle Knight. Oh, I love the Wiggle Knight. Look at him go, chat. He's living his best life. Like, we're just interrupting his little party in the castle. Like, we are the monster, chat. We're interrupting Wiggle Knight. Poor Wiggle Knight. You just, you just want to join us in a dance. We're just going to say no. Rip Wiggle Knight. Um... Jump past you. Get past you. I know, there was like a dance-off going on. There's like an item back here, right? Wait, wait, what? There's gotta be something in this room other than this, right? 
No? Oof. All right, well, that wasn't worth it. Well, I guess we're gonna greet Wiggle Knight again. Did you see him trying to snipe me even though I wasn't in battle? What a cheater. All right, chat, what an absolute cheater. Um... I guess I could take this fight if I really need to. I uh, killed the level 16 mage. I'm gonna do this to build meter for the boss fight. A little bit of meter for the boss fight. I'm kind of hoping for maybe a minor upgrade here. I'm not looking for gold. Not what I'm looking for. That's fine though. So we do have to go up here to progress the plot. So let's explore a little bit more. I'll have you heal me. Okay, so the game will buffer multiple spells. That's what I was testing there. Um, Check down here real quick for another item, and then we'll proceed with the plot. I like how intense the music is. I'm just avoiding all combat. I'm like, no thank you. Speaking of no thank you... I don't think I want to check what's at the other end of the hallway. The robots are not worth my time. If they kill an ally, they'll we'll waste a lot of healing supplies. I think I'm going to pass. So we will be able to full restore our MP. Having 32 is not bad. Most of our spells only cost 4 or 5 at this point in the game. So we can have the AI really fling quite a bit of spells. Eventually we'll get rid of the MP bonus stuff that's on Charlotte, our healer, the little girl. But right now I'd rather the AI have more resources so they're not as scared to use stuff. Oh, there's a chest. I only found 2 of 5 chests. Oof. We could come back and get certain chests. I was just hoping to get a little bit of an upgrade before then. Cup of Wishes is always a good find. That's always relevant in our fights. Mostly just money. Disappointing. Ooh, there we go. Skip skip that whole encounter. No thank you. <laughs> Behold, even the hero king is powerless when paralyzed by magic. You must be the Crimson Wizard of Altena. Tell me, why would Valda, the true queen, mount this cowardly attack? Well, she seeks to control the Mana Stones and thought it best to destroy Valsena before retaliation. Her Majesty is not troubled by past alliances. Hmm. A pity. That is all you wish to ask? So be it. Take this! Stop! Oh my. So this is where you ended up, Angela. I didn't think I'd have the pleasure of seeing you so soon after your disappearance. May our paths cross again? No! Not again! Stay here and fight, you coward! You won't get away, Crimson Wizard. Not again. But he just did. <laughs> right, Chad? He very easily got away. I am su You're safe. I am surprised he just let us go, though. Duran, have you returned? Your Majesty. You know my mother? You mean... You are the daughter of Valda? The true queen? Yes, though, she attempted to take my life. To think that Valda had a daughter all along. What do you mean? Forgive me. I meant no insult. You can't just say something like that and expect me not to have questions. Tell me. Hey, you can't talk to the king like that. Take it back. Be still, I am not offended. My apologies, Princess. You may one day learn the truth, but now is not the time. I am, however, worried about Valda. She is a c 
kind soul. I cannot imagine her deciding to throw her daughter's life away. Uh. Oh! Your Majesty. We are searching for the elementals that reside near the mana stones of the world. Please, tell us where to find this kingdom stone. Fairy? I see. Then you are all traveling under Fairy's guidance. I have met one of your kind when I stood against the Dragon Lord. In truth, I was chosen by that fairy. What? Sadly, that fairy was cut down at the hands of the Dragon Lord. I was spared. Hmm. If fairies have come to our realm again, this bodes ill for the world. Chat loving the voice acting. Mana stones exist in the world. What do you mean? <laughs> the powers of earth, water, fire, wind, light, darkness, the moon, and wood originate from these stones. You will find the elemental spirits of each stone living nearby. We have already located the elementals of light and earth, Lumina and Gnome. Hey, -o. <laughs> how are you doing? <laughs> what? That's goofy. Six remain. You must travel to Poloport by boat from Bizer. From there, you can reach Laurent's Manor Stone. It is the Wind Stone. Thank you, Your Majesty. We will find the stones. Hmm. You need Sylphid's wind powers in order to find the remaining stones. Return once you have found him. Safe travels to you all. Well, we left the kingdom. The bridge got blown up. And we went back to the kingdom. So Durin's journey has not really gone very far. You have certainly improved since I saw you last, Durin. In power and in spirit. I look forward to the day you face the Crimson Wizard and come back to us triumphant. Hero King's Hope has granted you a new ability. Oh, okay. So talking to him did give us something useful. Add 5% of CS gauge after winning a battle. Um... Only 5%. Hmm... It's like kind of useful, but also not really. Hmm. I don't know if I need int for anything yet. I could always respect the character later. I probably just want to keep giving him tankiness. She has free points. I have no idea what to spend on them. She's already at max int. Hmm. I guess the question is, since they spread out the abilities across three attributes, rather than just having, like, intelligence unlocking your spells, it's a little harder for me to decide how to level this character without seeing what the next abilities are. Hmm. Like, I imagine I'm just going to be pumping in, and then maybe... I might need spirit at some point. So, like, I could go this way to slowly unlock victory MP. I'll hold on to it though. So the problem is, like, there could be a really good ability if I save up my int for 9 points, and Spirit by itself doesn't do anything for leveling it. So I'm kind of like back and forth what I feel like the best decision is there. It really all comes down to when we hit level uh, 16 and go to a Mana Stone. Whether we get something nice or not. So let's talk to the knight that's here. I just showed someone to, into the courtyard so they could set up a new cannon. Makes sense they'd be beefing up the castle defenses with the Altina's troop movement. Come to think of it, I think the cannon mechanics is something about blasting all the way to Maya. It was almost like he was talking about shooting people out of that thing instead of cannonballs. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? Wouldn't that be something indeed, chat? So anyway, uh, we need to advance the plot, so we're going to go to the courtyard. We're going to talk to not Von Boyage. Von Voyage? Oh, 
Oh, you mean my older brother. I'm Von Jure. I, I know you want to get back to Maya, but hang on. I'm still setting up my brother's invention. So I think our goal is to potentially hit level 16 by the end of the next boss. So I think when we go to fight a real boss, we're going to use XP up on the way to the boss. And then we know about the trick from last time that as long as one of these meters is still active, both of them will apply. So while this might only last, I think, 10 minutes or so, and this might only last 10 minutes, I could technically make that cookie last for 20 minutes. And if I happen to pick up another one on the way there, I could just chain it again. So I could get extended money and XP. Now that technically is a bug slash exploit. Shr I'll shrug. Oh, you know what I haven't tried so far in this playthrough? <laughs> Chat, should I see if they uh, have any menu bugs for like infinite items? Like, I don't think I'll save if I do that because I'd rather not have infinite money. But I'm kind of curious. Let's talk to the fortune teller here. People's lives are 99% destiny, but the rest of your future is always shaped by your will. It's up to you to decide. We call that final 1% hope. What's that face for, huh? Why not get a reading from this old fortune teller? Um... Uh, hmm. hmm. Nothing is coming to me. That's never happened. All I see is a fairy creature fluttering around. Yes, a fairy like that. Uh, oh my, are you a real fairy? It's my fault. It's impossible to divine the future of a person possessed by a fairy. There's nothing wrong with your gift. That gave me a cold sweat. I think I should rest for today. Close the door on your way out. The thought of the fortune teller has granted me a new ability. Status effect time shortened by 50%. Eh. Most of that is not relevant. It's just called use a cure item. We're going to ignore those. We want pure statistical buffs and pretty much nothing else. Defense in this game doesn't super matter unless we're talking about the AI. If you want them to not die constantly, it's important that you make them tanky, I guess. And another little cactus sighting. So we're, we're almost at the very important 10% discount on shops. So I'm going to hold off on any real major purchases, aside from the candies we already have, until much later. I might get a small item or two to hold me over. It's only get 6,000, which is actually pretty good. A couple item seeds we could use. If we get good, good RNG, we might get something useful. Apparently, there are beasts sealed within the monostones. At least that's what it said in a book. What happened if they were released? Oh, I'm sure we'll never see what happens when they're released, chat. Definitely won't be bosses in the future. Not gonna lie, the six money things. Not great, but hoping we oh not magical rope. I'm hoping we get some other healing items. Since we're only allowed to have nine items in any given boss battle to make sure the game is somewhat challenging. Uh even if we overstock and have 50 in combat, only having that nine could be a big problem if our allies just take it to the face repeatedly. To my home, I sort of promise I won't go back until I finish my mission. Sorry, not in here. Anywhere but here. This is my house. When I left for Wendell, I promised I wouldn't come back home until... I defeated the Crimson Wizard. So... It's complicated. Fine. You don't have to go. I know how obnoxiously stubborn you can be. <sighs> Too bad. I was looking forward to seeing your room, though. 
All those skeletons in your closet and secrets under your bed? Cut it out. Okay, so we're not allowed to go back to Durin's home. I guess we still have a pending question from last time, chat. Uh, generally, I've made the chat uh, make a couple decisions. So the chat shows my party both times that we've played the game, this being the second time. So I guess the question would be, chat, for Angela, do you want her to go down the path of light or darkness? We can take a look at their abilities regardless and compare them a bit. In case chat feels undecided. But I was just curious if anybody wanted us to go one specific direction or another. So Charlotte says, you know those spinny things outside town? Those are called windmills. No one knows why they spin. It's a mystery. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Let's go in the inn. So I think as long as we sleep it off, the plot will progress. And then go to rent. I would recommend stopping by Night Market and Bazir on your way. Any things for sale there that will help you and your travelers. Some rare items sold at the Night Market you can't buy anywhere else. Might as well take a look, right? From Bazir myself, so I'd love to recommend it to others. All right, let's see how many useful items we get out of this. What's the canon direction for the character? I have no idea. I don't think there is one. We're gonna get all these usables. I think between the light and dark paths, we get light magic. Well, we already have light magic. Dark path would probably just be focusing on shadow and a couple other things. Well, we got another rich incense. That's actually good for later. Uh, let's advance time a little bit. Let's rest until morning, because I think last time I made it evening, and then the trip to the other place made it nighttime. There we go. Yeah, I do not follow the lore, so there is extended lore beyond the game that we have played, I'm not aware. So I think, for example, for Durin, we're going to take his light path, so he ends up being kind of like a paladin character. And I think for Charlotte the Cleric, we're probably going to go the dark path again, because I just don't think I have a purpose for healers, to be honest. Where, like, a Necromancer or a Warlock, I think, would be more useful. Anything potentially that could give stat debuffs would be good. But for Angela, I think no matter what, you get damage. So I think it's more of a question of, like, do you want her to have abilities that potentially she's more self-sufficient? Or focus on light damage, which I think is generally better late game? Or just go for raw destructive power, but then not have, like, great element choice? So... There's some, like, some game decisions to make when it comes to that. And if chat wants to do it purely based off her look, we'll find out eventually. We have to get to the Gust Hall, which is not too far away, and I have to be level... Would I have to be 16 or 18? I might actually need to be 18. There's a little book back there that tells me what level it is. Oh. I missed the dialogue conversation, my bad. This is fine, because at some point we need it to become Nightfall, so we don't technically know this yet, but the Night Market only opens at night. But we also specifically need something from the Night Market, which the game doesn't quite clarify. So, if we take time here, it doesn't matter. We have to let in-game time pass anyway. So who did I not talk to? Oh, I didn't talk to you on the way back. I like how we had to tell- we had to talk to somebody that told us the cannon was there. I clearly was just there and there was no cannon. At least to the point that it was fully set up, but this time I'm sure we'll see it. Yeah, see now I can see it. Eek indeed. Come on. So at this point I don't want to spend too much money. I'm Von Jor, younger brother of Von Voyage, and he told me all about you. He even gave me this cannon to help out with your little adventures. Hop in! I'll send you back to my brother's place in Maya. Oh, no, 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 don't worry. I'm a much better shot than he is. Ready? Okay, I did confirm it's level 18. So, I don't think we'll hit that before the first Man of Stone.
And off we go, chat. Look at us go. A very safe way to travel. We definitely sh we definitely don't die upon impact of the ground. Here we go. Graceful landing. Anyway, let's skip them getting back up. So essentially, as long as we travel along the Golden Road, we'll end up at the Night Market. The cannon direction with space, pretty much. I'm not sure what calculations they're using, but it is what it is there. Speaking of which, what are our item souls looking at? 51 candies, that's kind of excessive. 24 chocolate is probably where I want to be for the rest of the game. 4 fairy walnuts is really good for boss battles. Medicinal herbs, we tend to use them in either like groups of three or nothing. 18 revives. Okay. I'm probably going to need at least 10 for the harder bosses, and I might use a few on the upcoming boss. But I think we're in pretty good shape. I don't think I need to restock. Since we've been pretty diligent in collecting the golden things, but maybe not so much all the treasure chests. So I could pause here, see I missed a chest somewhere. Could be down the path we haven't been yet. Well, that was almost very bad. Why she said it like that, but that's fine. See, 180 damage is pretty huge. So I could get rid of some problem enemies with her, potentially. I'm gonna cut through here. So we've gained enough strength that I basically one-shot these enemies. That's not bad. Okay, so what I'm gonna do... If she could get one more point, I want the victory MP boost. I've changed my mind. Avoid the encounters here. They're pretty low level, so we don't get much XP. It's just more like what is in my way, what's worth fighting. So already I feel like I'm taking no damage with this character. So that's good. If I leave him on his own, he should be fine. And I have just enough strength that I seem to be one-shotting on hard mode, which is good. So, 100, so that was 137 XP, and you saw I was barely taking any damage. So if I really want to level, I probably want to level here of the Moors. The other place where we were getting like 140 for the Chest Knight, but it had like double HP, absolutely not worth our time. And that's kind of where you have to be careful with it. Like sometimes bigger level is does not mean faster levels. Because they're just their defense just scales like way too high. And it's just way faster to do a couple of quick encounters. Like, this should be almost 200 XP. Yeah. So that was worth more than any of the fights in the harder area. Just due to the fact, too, it's easier to get the multipliers. And if we get a flawless victory, 10% is not a bad amount of XP. So I set myself up that I'm almost level 14. It's not too bad. Sadly though, it is still daylight. Unfortunate. The merchant town of Bazir. So our destination is the boat. If we go to the night market, we could get a couple of useful items to speed up encounters. I don't want to buy them in bulk yet but I do want to buy them at some point. I've never seen such a busy town with this many shoppers. They must have some fashionable stores around. We should be able to board a ship to Palo here. Let's go to the docks. Okay. Item seeds, not a bad pickup potentially. We upgraded the item box by picking up those random seeds. I don't think I really care what the people have to say in here. Most of them are just very simple. They're just saying, like, the merchants run the town, the merchants only have a big market at night. If you want to gain entrance there, perhaps wait in the inn. 
One of your standard stuff. Um. Oh, can I really not jump from there? Let's try this again. There we go. I was gonna say, I feel like we should have been able to jump up here and land. Oh, so close. Could almost make that in one drum. I think if I had been a little tighter with the platforming, I could have made that. Hmm. So I'm looking for something. Not seeing it. <laughs> and the it is little cactus. Where's little cactus? Let's see, what do you have to say? Richard Town is full of artisans selling their wares. Gotta watch myself or I'll end up spending too much. Uh, not that I want to purchase your weapons. What are they like right now? Seven more. Think about it. I could just wait till the other town, so it doesn't make a big difference. I definitely do not want to spend all my money because I need to use money to go to the next area. Um. Hmm. Oh, I can't. Why can't I jump off of this? That's weird. Invisible walls, she's strong, chat. Another chocolate, that's good because I can't purchase those yet. Another chocolate, that's really good. I still can't purchase those. There's the night market I can't get into, so if I come here... Once it's dark, the night market here is open for business. See, we got some time. I do want to pick up some basics for the upcoming boss. So I know, for example, we are going to a very windy area. So if I bring in Earth, I can counter the upcoming element of the boss. I know the boss beyond that needs me to have the water element. So if I have both of those, I think I should do mostly fine. Hmm. Where is Little Cactus is the question I'm asking myself. Were you somehow... Up here and I missed you? Try this again. I thought it was near the weapon shop, but I'm not seeing it. Hmm. So it's not there. Unless it's like down here. Oh, it is down here. Okay. So it's close. I had the general idea from last time we played where it was. I forgot specifically. It was down here versus on the side. It's almost night time, which is good. Are there any other items to find? There's one more treasure chest potentially to find. Hmm. So we'll, I think we'll let night naturally transition. Just looking to see if I can find one last item before it transitions. Welcome to our humble town, blah, blah, blah. Take use of the item seed here, I guess. Mushboomai. Eh. Item's okay. Let's do a quick stock of our items. See, something that boosts magic, ally, attack, and defense. That's good for later. I do have two earth elementals already, so that saves me some time. I think I only realistically need three. Light element might be useful. This enemy's magic defense. Increase all stats of an enemy. That's actually extremely powerful. Chance of changing enemy shape. Uh, I don't think I care about these. So at this point, I just need the day to cycle. So we got here a little sooner than expected. I could rest at the inn, but I want to rest at the other place. Is there any other item I missed? That's what I'm just looking for right now. Hmm. Oh, something over here. Another healing item, not too bad. I feel it. It's so close to nightfall. Look at the sky. Uh, I guess I could go in here. Double check. Did any of you have anything interesting to say? 
They warn us about the island near Beluka, where there's a volcano. We hear there's monsters there. Indeed, there are a lot of monsters there. Don't think there's anybody we could talk to early that would be useful. So yeah, just sadly, we were just a little too early arriving here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the inn. If it happens to cycle tonight, that's fine. Otherwise, we'll just force it to cycle tonight. Welcome. So let's save the game. We're going to keep in mind that any bulk purchases should be held off until we get to the next area, because we'll get 10% off. But there are a couple items that will make the bosses much easier. So this place is definitely intended... Oh, there's the other treasure chest. This place is intended to kind of balance out if you don't have a super well-rounded party. So I'm going to get one more mole bear claw. I want to do... Let's see... I'm going to go with four Poseidon Claws, and that should be good enough. I'm going to keep our purchases low here. I'm going to go for just four instead of like 30, but we're going to come back. So boost ally attack stats with elemental damage. So if we know the enemy's weakness, we can end up doing instead of like 30 damage a hit, like upwards of like 70 to 80. So that potentially basically speeds run speed runs the boss, which is kind of nice. We'll talk to you. People's lives are 100% destiny. Your future is already decided. There is no hope. Don't bother. You know you can always reset your training points and try again. It'll cost you, though. <laughs> so anyway, she can let us reset our points in case we make a mistake with our level ups. Right now, it's not relevant. We get a discount later in the game. We could talk to you. So he is basically the traitor of a prince. We don't have the character Stuart. We don't have the character who's related to that. So we can't do anything there. If we come here, we get to like a superstore. So this is like one of the first places we can actually straight up buy chocolate, which is really good. And it looks like we can also buy the AoE heal, which is potal oil. So if we're playing with an all melee party, as long as somebody has spirit being raised, uh, this allows for a potentially good AoE heal. Uh, I think I have to view this cutscene in order to get an ability, so enjoy the dancing. The Aurora sisters, famed entertainers of the night market. Shall we dance for you? <laughs> the voice acting, though. Sure, dance for us. Entertain the chat. I'm not really sure where the spotlight comes from. <laughs> Ye old fantasy spotlight is on. Thought of the Aurora Sisters has granted you a new ability. Increases magic damage by 5% in battle. So we could potentially stack that on our current character for more damage. Uh. Chat, we're going to try to do a little bit of tomfoolery, so humor me for like five five or so minutes. I want to see if we could do items. <laughs> Give me one second. We're going to save, so that way we don't put it on our main file, but I'm curious. Again. I'm going to try one thing to see if it works, and if it doesn't work, we'll move on and I'll just reset. So, let me think. Welcome. The Monasteries kind of has a big problem with remembering what items are held versus what items are available. So I think what we could do, let's get three of an item. I think this will work. Come again. <laughs> Come again. I feel when the intentionally outfits look about as tamer than your main character's outfit. Yeah, the <laughs> Our character is very interestingly dressed, I guess the most polite way of putting it. So let me think.
Oh, it doesn't work the way I want it to. Is there a way to potentially place more than one? Hmm. I don't think this will work then. This is something I might also explore in my free time. So for those that don't know, there is a pretty common glitch across many games. If I was able to assign more than one bumpkin here to the ring menu, I'm not sure how I would do it though. Or if I have to like clear the dart or something weird. Is there a way to switch it out? No, not really. If there is a way to place two in the menu, we could do something that would be considered, I think, like an underflow. So if I, for, so for example, if I have three items and I put two in the ring menu and I sell two items, I think the game will forget how many I'm supposed to have. And that's either going to put me at one if they accounted for it, or it'll forget how many I have and I can sell it again. So I was hoping that I could kind of mess around with this, but I don't see an easy way to do this. It's also possible they patched it out of the game. <laughs> it would not surprise me if at some point you could do it this way at all. Because I was always curious about this ring if I was ever able to like double input here. So I don't think there's a way to just plain remove an item, which I think is also a problem. Hmm. I'm going to try one more thing and then I'm going to undo. Bumpkin is really good, but I don't think I want it here. It does damage based off of luck and it's way stronger than any other spell that you have in the game. I don't think this will let me do it. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be like an input. I was trying to see if I could like... somehow confuse the game into doing this. No, it's not going to let me. That's unfortunate. Oh. Hold on a second. Let me try one thing with three slots. <clears throat> I'm going to try this again. Ooh, okay. They thought about it. Alright, so I don't see an easy way to do it, so we'll just reset our save. We'll possibly go back to this later. So I'll make another save file so I can mess around with this later. See if I can find something in between streams. So there are, there are several games that are out there right now that you could do where you could do nonsense like that. Like you could sell merchants your own inventory. Welcome. It's possible I might need to use the keyboard versus using a uh, controller in order for that to work. <laughs> Come again. I think Fable was a good example of a game where you could sell the merchant his own inventory. <laughs> I think, um, I think even Skyrim has that. So it's definitely a bug that exists across many modern games. Okay, so now we're going to continue with the plot where we just have to inve investigate the town. So we'll talk to Metello who goes, shh. Look, there on the horizon, I saw something move. I bet it was a ghost ship. Heard some skippers talking about it. Oh, I wish I could ride on a ghost ship. It's always been my dream. Oh, sorry, I'm Batello. As you can see, I'm obsessed with the supernatural. I really hope the ship's haunted. <laughs> Why the obsession, though? Oh, I I'm not afraid, though, if that's what you think. Okay, so let's go back to where we were. Oh, there's actually nobody to talk to here. Never mind. Must be a person at the top of the building. Yeah, I can see them now. Really? I can't jump on that? Whatever. Let's talk to you. Welcome to Vizier. I'm on the tourism board for our fair merchant town. You don't look like you're from around here. If this is your first time. Make sure to visit our famous night market. It's one of a kind. You'll find rare items for sale. Don't forget to watch the Aurora Sisters' captivating sideshow. Won't regret it. Oh, before I forget, the night market is only open at night. Enjoy. Yeah, we're already there. So she's a little late to that party. We already knew about it. Oh, well. There's a mysterious item called the Minor Mallet. 
Even the merchant guild that runs the night market hasn't gotten its hands on it. Alright, so we need that for the future. Eek, chat. Merchant bugs in Baldur's Gate 3 were pretty fun. Yeah, well, I'll see if I can break it later. It might either require, like, a different input or, like, free slots. Some of them require you to have, like, full inventory. So, I I'd rather not spend too much time there. I just wanted to try a couple of basic things just to see if I could get it. It's always nice to get it first time on stream. Like, when we clipped up that rock for no reason. That was fun on stream. So maybe we could take it another... Another step or two, perhaps next time. So now we're at Paloport. Paloport is now a territory under the control of the Navarro Nation. Move along. Paolo is in a terrible state. We should ask around town and find out more. There could be a lead on one of the mana stones after all. <laughs> Why is he standing like that? Is he, is he trying to look menacing? What is this? When can I set sail, huh? I got business waiting. Looks like a, like an ape. Like, who, who just naturally poses like that? That's so awkward. A couple wishes acquired. Oh, I thought I saw a shiny. Oh, I did. Never mind. Elopor is under the territory of the Navarro Nation. Move along. Hmm... I think the thing I'm looking for is near the one of the shops. It might be the armor shop, maybe? We're looking for another little cactus while collecting random items. Another chocolate, not bad. Uh well lots of wares to browse. Oh, good choice. This is good quality. Oh, good choice. Ooh, exciting. I guess I can upgrade my weapons so that way they're not horribly, horribly far behind. <laughs> Come again. So I don't want to buy any armor, so I don't think it'll matter. If I want to buy armor, I want to do it on the way back, because I'll have a discount. There's a little cactus. So we know that we're going to go up to Gust Hall, potentially, and also Heaven's Way. And both of those will contribute towards the discount on shops. So if I do want to make any other big purchases, we'll wait. The night market being a really good place, potentially. Um, oh, there's a chest back here. More chocolates, not bad. So I think at this point, I'm a little overstocked for bosses, but you never know. Goofier things have happened. Gust Hall, that's the cave up near Heaven's Way. What do you need up there? I mean, there's a giant wind statue blocking the entrance anyway. I got curious and went to see for myself. You can always see it for yourself, I suppose. No need to take my word for it. Okay, well, we'll go there very soon. Survivors in the mountains. Meadow. Gonna take my order or not? Oh, oh, uh, sorry for the wait. One of the other playable characters is here. May I help you? So this time we don't learn about the survivors of the Amazonian nation. Well, we we kind of do. We hear parts of the dialogue, but we could piece it together. Did you hear? Navarro managed to infiltrate Citadel Laurent. Uh-oh. The cat is unresponsive. We don't have the character that can interact with them. Oh, I can't jump on the house. I tried. So yeah, I think we're ready to... Uh, I guess at least climb up the mountainside here. Yeah, I feel like I don't want to make the game too easy. I mostly just want to show off cool tech with the game if we could find it. I haven't had a chance to look up any speedrun stuff. But we do have save files in different locations. 
So who knows, maybe at the very end, if I see something that's very interesting, I'll try to do it on stream. So let's go down here, because I think Little Cactus was here. Yeah, there we go. Look at that, chat. Memory from last time. So we just need one more, and we get the almighty discount. But in the search for that, we're going to get a lot more damage. So combat should go fairly quickly. So we haven't really touched our armor in a while, but that's fine. Didn't those people in the tavern mention a meadow? Should we go? Fine. Mountain climbing isn't my forte, but let's go. I mean, the holy bolt's putting in the work. I mean, if there's ever going to be a place that we want to clip in order to save time, this this is the place to do it in. So we might practice clipping. I killed almost all of them instantly. That was kind of nice. So close to the leveling. Come on. Come on, do your slash so I can at least see how it looks. He is so finicky, Chad. What is the trick? Do I do it slower or faster? Oh, um. Hmm. <laughs> Chat, hmm. I don't. I, I don't. I don't think I'm supposed to do this. <laughs> we look at us go, chat. We're touching something that's not supposed to exist. Yeah. Oh, this is kind of working. <laughs> Hold on, chat. Wait, can I get up here? What's going on? Oh, we have confused the game. Oh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love That's so silly. It makes no sense. I love it, though. That made me smile. Well, if I could do that faster, that would be a time save. But take that going the other route. Yeah, like this is another place I could potentially zip. Nope. Oh well. Yeah, Holy Bolt's actually somewhat useful. So if she starts recovering MP per battle, I might actually be able to level faster that way. Ouch. Hmm. This is another candidate. If we could just get like a little bit of height. Oh, almost. I love how my head like disappears into the floor. That's how you know the hitboxes. Mmm. It's a delicious hitbox. The question is, where could we jump in order to get the most shenanigans? Oh, I wish I could cancel that with another jump. It just won't let me. Like, see, like, I can almost make it there. So unfortunate. Whoa, what was that? What? Wait, what? There's, like, a little spot here where... You see that? What am I... What? like a little little levitating spot over here. What is this? It's not even touching the ground here. So I think I might be able to land on that ledge if he does the thrust attack. Because as I said before, it seems to put him further forward than the game intends. Like there, I did actually land on it, but he slid off afterwards. Unfortunate. Because I think it would be possible to skip this if I had like a longer jump. So it would not surprise me if Kevin could go up that way. But I can't seem to get the right angle for it. So we'll move on. Uh, I should go this way first, actually. So yeah, so unfortunately, there, I, there are little rocks I might be able to climb back up on. So like, as soon as we get here, we would have been fine. Oh, I actually did not want to jump all the way down. I was curious if we could somehow land on this rock, because that also would have saved some time. Try one more time. Come on, game. Let me experiment, please. Come on. 
Come on. No. Kind of? I think we did come up the wrong way once the first time. But as I said before, it does seem like a little character specific. Both from their height and what their jump attack is. It's a bit unfortunate. But hey, we did clip up that other way in a very, very unintended way. Hmm. There's gonna be zombies in here at some point. So let's go to the totally not dangerous fields. Let's have a little nap over here. Does this count as enough of an incline? I'm just kind of curious. Game, please. It's so finicky. I beg of you. I'm curious if I could skip the cutscene trigger. That's what I'm looking to do. Actually, let me save before I do that in case I do actually manage to clip out of bounds. Might as well do some very minimal safety strats of not needing to go back here. Resave here. It's like we can technically walk up here. So I wonder if you could trick the game into thinking you're like up there or something. But it requires him to do the lunge attack in order to test it. Which as you can see is not super consistent. So there has to be like some kind of trick to it. Like I don't know if he has to be in a certain step of his animation. Because now he's not even doing it at all. Oh, hello. Yeah, we could definitely do some weird things here. So, yeah, it feels like maybe if I go at this wall, maybe he can launch himself vertically. This could be another really fun place to revisit with Kevin. But anyway, suspicious wall. Uh, are these some Nosa flowers? Oh, no. awake. This is the Laurent secret base. We Amazons have been gathering our remaining forces since the thieves of Navarro attacked the Citadel. Who are you? My name is Reese, princess of the kingdom of Laurent. After Navarro attacked the Citadel, I assumed I alone survived. While searching for my kidnapped brother Elliot, I received word of this hidden base and returned. We're looking for a mana stone. The wind stone, to be precise. Oh, the wind stone? I believe it is located in Gust Hall, a cave in the westerly mountains. You may find your path blocked by the wind statues there, however. We could have controlled the wind for you from Citadel Laurent, but with the invasion... It's settled then. So, we'll help you get the Citadel back, and you can help us with Gust Hall. No, I could not possibly accept. This is our fight. Once you are fully rested, you are free to leave. Ugh. Go talk to the Amazon guards. A little bit of extra cash for later. That's going to be useful. We're going to be spending down to like literally zero, just so chat is aware. So every penny somewhat counts. Because I'm going to be buying the 100 costing items over and over and over again. 
We captured an agent in the meadow. He's behaving oddly. I do not know how the Navarlans managed to take the Citadel in this state. And we are getting a hilarious amount of candy. How much am I up to? 59? Actually pretty good. So even if I need to full heal later in the game and it costs like two candies per heal, it's still really good. Citadel Laurent is known to be impenetrable. It's surrounded by crags and harsh winds that protect it. Retaking it will not be an easy feat. I do not know if we will succeed. Mm-hmm. Let's see what you have to say about this. There will be a tactical meeting regarding our next move in there. Uh, we'll take this first. Three chocolates. That's a lot of healing. Your Highness, I am so pleased to see you well. <coughs> Please, do not strain yourself. <laughs> I am fine, child. How can we take the Citadel from the thieves who have it overrun? A frontal attack would easily be rebuffed by Navarro. Is there any way? Forgive me, I am a mere caretaker. I never learned tactics or strategies of war. Wait. We should consult with the sage Dom Perry. He may have wisdom to impart upon us. Dom Perry? Yes! Back when the world was waging war on the Dragon Lord and his unstoppable forces, Dom Perry advised the Hero King on strategy, which led Valsena to victory. Where can we find this tactician? Hmm. He is difficult to locate. Dom Perry is Cora Poker. They are small, reclusive beings that dwell in Rabbite Forest, in, in south of Jad. Then we must go and find him. Please wait! The Cora Poker do not like larger folks such as us. You may not be able to meet with him at all. Finally, you have returned, and with you, our hope. You cannot leave us to travel again so soon. Your Highness, please stay with your people. <sighs> Excuse me. Don't be so stubborn. There's no need for you all to do everything yourselves. We need to get into Gust Hall, so this is our battle too. You would take this mission? Thank you. It would be such a help. So, what do we do? Hmm. Dom Perry may not agree to meet with you in your current forms. You must appear less human and more... Cora uh, Poker-like. You must find the legendary Minor Mallet. Rumor has it that the item is in Bizer. With it, you could possibly pass for Cora Pokers. <laughs> Why do you say current forms like that? Well, we're going to go attain the Minor Mallet. So this is kind of a downside to the game. It's kind of like a holdover from the SNES days. There's a lot of really unnecessary backtracking. So like, Chad, if, you, if you've not seen where this is, like... Where would you think the Minor Mallet is, based off of what the game has told you so far? So I'll let chat ponder that question for a moment as I collect these items. Oh, headgear is actually kind of a good upgrade for me, given that we are not wearing anything. Yeah, I like that defense increase. If you guessed we have to go back to the the black market that we were or the night market we were just at, you'd be correct. This way. Like we literally were just there. It's crazy. I don't understand why it's like that. Just I want to have the dream chat that I clip out of bounds here. 
Yeah, you see what I mean? Like, we were just there a moment ago. Like, they, they could have cut that out in the remake. Like, would that have hurt anybody's feelings if the first time we were there, they forced us to get the Night Mallet, or, excuse me, the Minor Mallet? And then we have to go all the way back to the very starting area of the game. Ooh, it is just really not behaving here. Oh, well. I'm gonna have to see if there's some kind of trick to getting that more consistently. Because I feel like what can happen is I might be able to go, like, diagonal up. Like, see how there's, like, that little rocky edge? I think I could just like shoot into the into the sky if I angle that correctly. Oh, I don't think I ever investigated this. Okay, there's nothing to do with it. So we should have the last one that I need over here. So now I can go ahead and get the discount. Because we're going back to the night market anyway, so I might as well do this with the discount. So I'm going to spend most of my money, but not all of my money. I guess I could have held off on purchasing from the night market earlier. I did the same mistake last time, but it's fun. Is that Von Voyage's cannon? Oh, you know my cousin? The name's Messi. Nice to meet you. Will this cannon reach Pfizer? But of course. Are you ready? Sure, we'll go back. So anyway, they, they literally set up a cannon just to make you backtrack again. <laughs> I think this was missable in the SNES version. Like, I don't think this was mandatory that we use this. In the remake, it's mandatory we use this to go back. Chris Flat. Yeah, I'll skip some of their getting up animation. There's not much really to see there. Where can the minor mallet be? Ooh, don't... It's already dark outside. Okay, so. It's already dark outside. Shall we check out the night market? We're gonna make sure to talk to her. There she is. So, like, chat, you saw we were just here. Welcome. Looking for something in particular? I always wanted to set up shop like this. Uh, running a shop isn't as fun as I thought. Well, enjoy your doodads. I, I think I'll go take a nap. Like, doesn't that feel like something was missed there? She's like, I'm excited to run a shop. Next sentence. It's not as fun as I thought, but she didn't do anything in between. That's why I was thinking maybe they forgot to put that initial dialogue the first time we were here and then run it the second time. I feel like that's a mistake in the remake. I, I don't think that makes sense what we just witnessed. But that's fun. She's already fed up with it. It's been like zero seconds since she's been there. And then she's gone again. Sadly, though, they stop you from using it as a major item. So we're going to go back to the very beginning of the game. Look at that. They're charging us 270. So yeah, we'll make some major purchases later since I know we have to come back anyway. So we'll take advantage of our strength ups if we really need to use it, but not not likely on our journey there. I'm going to go ahead and skip the boat animation since it, unlike the other game, it doesn't really give you a good sense of like where things are relative to each other. I think there's a chest over here I missed. Yeah, we couldn't get that last time. So we're back in Jad, which we escaped the prison from, or we escaped. Oh, speaking of which, we forgot to get you on the way back. Glad we checked over here. That two times XP boost is actually super important for us later, but I don't need it literally right now. Uh, but essentially, we escaped prison. We got a couple items from this place. The shops have not really upgraded. I can see I found all the treasure chests, though. Might as well get a free candy. Although arguably not worth gathering since we have so many items. I'm just happy we have a lot of candies. So far, the hard mode has been merciful for the most part. Surprisingly. What will happen to you when you... 
minor mallet, Charlotte. <laughs> Are you tiny to start with? We might lose you in inside a flower bud. What do you mean? I'm not that small. <laughs> Since we have a healing statue there, I might as well stick it. Just make sure you don't blow away with the rest of the pollen. Get out of my way before I break you. Well, oh, that was a great time to hit them. See, so you your spell damage is actually fine. It does as much as two power attacks, which I think is okay, given that it's not that expensive. I could start XP boosting if I wanted here. I'm just thinking about if that's worth it. No, I'm, I'm going to wait for later. I think there's a better place we could use it. When we start going back to Gust Hall, I think I'll turn it on. Because I can have that whole damn. I can have that whole dungeon with bonus XP. I think that'll work better for us. So we need to get four levels at some point. I'm not going to get it before the next boss. Or even right after, either. Nicely done. And bonk. Three-hit combo into a nice little slice. I'm looking forward to the class upgrade, changing our combos up a little bit. He leaped. I did not want him to leap there. That is so sad. If he had just done it in place, that actually would have hit all the enemies. Rip. Let's go for stun attacks there to reduce damage to our party. So I took a little bit of damage, but again, if I'm not at 1 HP or lower, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Here we go. New cutscene. by Cora Poker. Hopefully the day treated you okay, Kirk. I missed your response if you mentioned earlier. Got the beard in the trees. Oh, do I even want to get these chests? I don't think I do. I like he shrunk down. He's still almost as tall as Charlotte. Charlotte is so tiny. <laughs> I love, by the way, our plan is to blend in with these people. We are we are so dumb, Chan. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> like, truly, we match everything that we're seeing. Oh, there's a chest. I want that later. We are inconspicuous. Ah, you three do not look familiar. Uh, oh, we just moved into town. Lovely to meet you. Is it just me, or does something about you smell human? Uh, human? Ew. I hitched a ride on a human to get here, so his stink must have gotten on me. Uh -huh. It is hard to avoid those simple, stinky humans. Most definitely. So, um, do you happen to know where we can find Dom Perry the Sage? How about you look for the fellow yourself? Cora Poker in here about Dom Perry. Careful you don't reveal that you're actually big folk. Genius plan, chat. 10 out of 10. Nothing could go wrong. Clearly, we blend in with the society. I love how we still, like, completely dwarf them. I wish we could see Charlotte compared to them. Charlotte is the only one that might be able to pass. Or something in there. I'm just making sure there's no treasure chest up there. One of the homes definitely has a treasure chest up there. 
So we're being, we're a little prank is being played on us. We're told to go find Don Perry, but as we go around, we're gonna see that we can't find him anywhere. The answer will become increasingly obvious as we continue. Uh, don't see anything in here worth taking. I think there's also a little cactus here somewhere, I think. I'll double check. I made a small list before we started the playthrough. I might just consult it real quick. Uh, actually, let's go this way. stairs. I, can, I might as well just climb them. He always needs a haircut all along, it's true. Don Perry, I don't know, but he's not here. Yeah, yeah. The game is having a little joke at our expense. Oh, that reminds me. Since we're revisiting, I have to go back to the other towns. Speaking of other things I have to do. So we have to go back to Astoria. We could go there. Okay. I don't think there's one here. No, there is not. Okay. Just treasure chests. That's all I wanted to verify. Eventually, we get a little indicator that tells us whether or not it's here. The little cactus. But at the moment, not needed. I saw Don Perry walking around a moment ago. Mm -hmm. We're getting there. So if we could get to double XP, that would be huge with the cookie. I know there's at least two in Gust Hall. So right now I think we that would put us at 13. So we need to get two more. Let's go ahead and acquire that treasure chest. Silver item seeds. Potentially a good chance of getting a decent item. He's probably outside making mischief. Well, needless to say, chat, the old one that is not a clone of everything we've seen is uh, the one we need to talk to. When on this side, this place looks huge. I'm going to find Don Ferry here. Gee, chat, he could be anywhere. He could be absolutely anywhere. Anyway, let's go talk to Don Ferry. But I asked if you knew where he was. When you asked, I was taking a turn around the village. I did not know where I would be at any one moment. <laughs> uh, what is wrong with this ornery old man? Wow, that's, uh, deep, I suppose. <laughs> what? Do you doubt me, youngin? came for advice, Dom Perry. Well, there's a rumor that mice invaded a, a core poker homestead near the kingdom of Laurent. We figured uh, other core pokers might know how to help them get their village back. Any ideas? Oh, <gasps> my! That is dreadful! <laughs> uh, Laurent, you say? Oh! I have an idea. First, you must locate the wind elemental, Sylphid. We would love to find Sylphid, but there is still a wind statue blocking the way, right? Ah, is that so? Wind is an ever-changing element. But as the world's mana power ebbs, there may be those who have found a way to twist Sylphid's powers for ill. What? The wind is restless. Something may have befallen the statue. Regardless, listen well to what I have to say. From one of the mountain paths in Laurent is the entrance to Gust Hall. A dangerous wind labyrinth. You can traverse the hall by changing the directions of the wind statues to create a path. The rest is up to you. 
the windstone can be found deep within. <laughs> there, you may also find Sylphid. Okay. Sylphid can spread the sleep spores from the Somnosa Meadow throughout Citadel Laurent to incapacitate the Navarral agents. <laughs> 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 little Wait, joker laugh there. You knew we weren't Cora Poker the whole time? <laughs> it was obvious. If you were Cora Poker, you would have known that this is the only settlement of our kind in the whole world. <sighs> Besides, I can tell that you have a fairy within you. We, Cora Poker, can see that you are her chosen one with a single glance. I am not fond of humans myself, but I know that if Barry is here, the world is in dire peril. We cannot turn a blind eye. Pardon my teasing from earlier. <laughs> I just cannot help myself. <laughs> oh, oh, there is no greater joy. There we go, champ. We were trolled. There's some treasure chests. I don't think they matter. We'll move on. Again, for the most part, I think we're over items. So if I happen to see them, it's fine. What we do need to make sure is that we get the little cactus on the way back, though. It is super, super important we do Don't not miss those. A good lead. Are you ready to retake Laurent? Spreading the sleep scores is a great idea. What are we waiting for? Let's go to Best Hall. Alright, I'm up. Come on. This ought to help. <laughs> Barely broke a sweat. Boom. There's a little cactus. Let's see. There'll be two at Gust Hall. So I need to get at least one more. I think I could do that. I believe there's one... In Astorius. Let's go to Astoria. Even though we technically don't have to go there for plot reasons. I'm gonna hope our allies kill the ant, or the, the flying bee, I mean. Let's go ahead and get rid of these. Oh, I guess it is an ant. Because this is assassin ant, technically. We're bully our way through there. So essentially, once we come around the corner, we'll be at the point where we could get double XP randomly. So double XP randomly will stack with our other bonuses. So even though we're not taking too many encounters here, we can easily catch up and it'll let us get XP even faster. So I think it's just important that we grab this while we can. little cactus here many times how no matter how many times to see this place just can't wrap my head around it curses mm-hmm and she ekes up here um, we get to play the game of I spy Chad we're looking for little cactus that's all I'm really looking for I revisit some of these areas hmm I guess I could get the chest that's here. So we revisited well, we visited this town earlier. I used to play here all the time when I was younger. Yeah, yeah. Nothing to do here now. Some items over there. Hmm. I feel like it's kind of in the center of town, so we're gonna take one little tour over there where we proceed. 
item there. Don't need that. So we're finding some items, but not the main thing that I'm looking for. Uh, oh, there it is. <laughs> the elevated terrain blocked my view the first time. I think we're doing okay now. So I believe there's potentially one more to get. So that's a good sign. I'm going to check the map to make sure we grab the other little cactus. Since even with the without the finder, I can tell if I visit a certain section of the map. So we're going to take a look right now. I did not. So we're going to grab it on the way back, and that should put us at a very comfortable 15. Perfect. Let's go ahead and avoid the encounters if I can, because that saves time. Even with that little detour, the fact that it takes like three seconds to escape battle means that taking a second to dodge battle is better. And you can see we also walk slower when we're in battle, sadly. Wow, they actually got a kill? Kind of impressed by that, honestly. Holy Vault spam is real. Ooh, the day-night cycle stopping me from turning. That was so rude. <laughs> it was like, stop. Nighttime. It was all over. Okay, so this is really good. That means I don't have to go as far in the dungeon before getting double XP. So I believe like right in the first room will be the first cactus. And I think what we'll do is we'll we'll beat the boss that's there. We'll take a break there. Shouldn't take more than like 15 minutes, maybe. I feel that gives me time to set up against uh, the other bosses, which are potentially going to take a while. And also that gives me some time to mess around with the tech of the game. To see if we could clip out of bounds and showcase it for next time. Coming aboard. Jeez, he's just straight up taking two Ted. Imagine being forced to backtrack chat and it just charges you money to continue with the plot. That's so rude. I'm shaking my head. We lost, uh, I think 400 so far to backtracking. Game teaching us how to grow seeds. I guess I could stop by an inn and grow the seeds. It won't take that long. I like to do them when we have a lot of them. We did kill an enemy earlier and got double item seed. So maybe that's good enough to make a break here. And due to how it works, I'd rather use the cheaper seeds first before we use the better seeds. Up some wishes, a full heal. Full heal is actually pretty important. Frosty ring. Um, it's better than nothing. So that will potentially give us immunity to freeze. Not relevant for this portion of the playthrough. I could give it to our healer so she's less likely to die. I think that's actually relevant. Ideally, we want one that uh, cancels poison from one of those seeds. Or uh, cancels shrink. Both of those are kind of relevant at least in the beginning and then we'll be using freeze probably sometime next session but essentially since we're going to the wind place and not the ice place we don't have to worry about freeze yet however it does grant some defense so it's better than nothing for the healer but she's probably gonna die nearly instantly okay so we're gonna avoid this encounter the moment we go in gust hall i'm gonna activate the cookie i think This battle. 
Come on. Or I could technically save it for next time. Maybe it make more sense then. Yeah, let's actually hold it for next time. Because I'm thinking, because we're going to be doing the ninja fight and the door fight. That's a lot of encounters. All right. Clear your way. And plus, I'm not sure if it saves. Like, I'm not sure if the counter stops if I save the game and restart. Yeah, let's just hold on to it then. Goodbye, Noodle Beak. I'll do some basic encounters to make up for the XP here, though. I think last time we were level 16-ish when we went to do that, uh, kind of difficult fight, even on normal. So I want to be at about the same level as before. So we can expect the boss to potentially put us to level 15. I was also kind of hoping one of the seeds gave an extra cookie there. Because that means we can really extend how much time we get the bonus XP. By alternating between cookie and money, cookie and money. So that potentially would be like 40 minutes of super buffs. Which is definitely not an intended mechanic of the game, by the way. Low Gust Hall. Sleepy Imp. Those things are actually fairly easy to kill. So if we fight those... I think that's worth the time. So we're on the lookout for two different... Unlocks, there's the little cactus. Yeah, if I could kill a couple of these, this would be huge. We just gotta do a little bit of damage and I think we're good. Oh, I got tagged right at the end. That's so sad. Oh, that would have been worth decent XP. Now we potentially double XP. So we really just need to level once between now and the boss. It put me at a nice safety HP total. Love how quiet it is here. Fortunately, there's a gold statue up ahead, so my MP usage doesn't matter. So I might as well just machine gun out the spells. Hang on, what happened here? Oh no! Someone might be after something like Don Perry feared. Uh, hurry! There we go. Just a small little dungeon to go through. I mean, chat knows I'm going to spend at least a couple minutes trying to skip this dungeon. Like, <laughs> humor me for a little bit. Can't get through the wind with strength alone. Whoa! Can't someone do something about these gale winds? <gasps> oh! 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 The dungeon skip! I skipped it! <laughs> we skipped it! <laughs> I don't have to do it! Bye! Jana! Um, screw this. <laughs> we're going forward, chat. Yeah. Look at that. We're saving that. Worth it. Absolutely worth it. Look at that. Just went into heaven. That skips like that entire other dungeon section. Worth it. I don't need the XP. That's fine. We can level right at the end. I'm going to save that little shortcut. So I didn't get the full skip that I was looking for, but we got a little mini skip. We did something out of order. Oh, that was so good. There we go. Our persistence has paid off. That saved like five minutes easy. So I don't have to go through any of that. And the best part is I could do it again. I probably want to level off these enemies because we can heal and restore MP. So hopefully we get double XP here. Oh, that was so good. Persistence chat. We just had to apply the trick in the right place. So I'm sure the speedrunners know where to apply it. Ooh, double XP? Oh, Chad, it's like it rewarded me. It's like, oh, you skipped it? Here, skip some leveling. Just go up a lot. It's fine. Uh, that enemy's kind of annoying. I don't seem to be able to stun him very well. So we just need a little bit more XP. And I can use candies to heal myself if I'm really desperate. 
There we go, Chad. I officially found my own sequence break. Without looking anything up, I felt it. I finally was rewarded. Can I cliff up here out of curiosity? That would save me some time if I can. Come on. He's really not going to cooperate now. What a jerk. Okay, right, so I can't go up that way. Hmm. Okay, so I might be able to I might only be able to get a mini shortcut. It's fine. We'll we'll practice I think clipping through. <laughs> so, so we were ignoring well, actually you know what? We'll try for a little bit more. It might be worth it. If I could skip this entire dungeon, it would be really funny. Because this dungeon is probably the most pointless. Yeah, the problem is that there's a bridge here. So unless I can like somehow ultra clip here through the magic of going into heaven, I would have to do the full dungeon. Well, not the full dungeon, but at least half the dungeon. Alright, okay, so there's nothing to clip off of here. Unfortunate. Uh, I'm gonna try one thing, and then we're gonna go to the midpoint of the dungeon. So, if I do that little trick to go upwards, is it possible to go, like, really far up? Like, how high can I go with this trick? Like, can I do this here and go higher and go up the wall? No. So there is just, like, a very specific use case... Where it seems like I have to be like slightly angled up and the wall has to be angled away from me all the way through. Hmm. So I'm not sure, like, I'm not seeing an obvious rock I could do it on. So if we saw any part of the wall that looked a little suspicious, it's possible I could clip up it. I'm not sure if this one is, it might be too bulky. Yeah, it's too bulky. So yeah, this this is worth revisiting, I think, in the future. I think we might be able to skip this whole dungeon. I don't know if I was supposed to hit the switch to skip that or not, but I don't know. That might have been a skip. I don't know. I definitely didn't do whatever it wanted there. I just ignored it. Ooh, I got tagged there. That's unfortunate. Some damage there. So yeah, we'll find little mini skips. I definitely want to practice in this area. We're so close to leveling. Um, do I even need you? There's a way to flip the switch again. If I can level here, this will give me my MP and HP back for the boss. So that would be like completely beautiful timing if I leveled off of this. So ideally here, we're gonna get a double XP and then I could skip all the rest of the encounters. So we'll be just one level under the current area, which is okay. Don't need it to be too crazy. I, can't get enough of this power. I need one more battle because we didn't get double XP. So here's where, like, if we have to do the puzzle as intended, I'm not sure if I can do what it wants. Because I could do this, but I, I can't get, like, the little bit of extra momentum. So I might have to actually do the puzzle. Unfortunate. Fortunately, it's not that hard. I'm pretty sure I just hit the switch once and we're good. I can't quite get that item, but I don't think that matters. Let's go this way. Future Trials of Mana Speedrunner are the works. I don't know. I thought about it. I mean, like, if I play it on beginner mode, then the AI would not really bother me. So I was thinking about if I wanted to skip up here earlier, just for clarity. Oh, our Magician just got more defense? That's perfect. I want the characters that are not Durin to get armor increases, so that works for me. So we essentially just need to go this way, and we're good. So I need to hit the switch one more time, I think. But can I get there without doing anything too crazy? Let's see. Yeah, this should work. Perfect. So we skipped half the dungeon. I need one more fight. I prefer it to not be these things. Let's let's not fight these. These are too tanky. Anything with armor is kind of a waste of time. Let's kill you to get the guaranteed level. Aerial enemies are very easy to stun. So their level kind of doesn't matter at all. Perfect. So we got like a little extra health. A little bit of raw stats. 
Level ups also improve our defense. Don't think I need anything here. I guess I could set her to spirit. I'm gonna leave her an HP boost for bosses. Maybe that's what the strat is. I, I remove HP boost and casual play, and I leave victory MP boost on her. And when I come to a boss, because there's always a gold statue before major boss fights, I could just go up and increase my health there. Because I definitely don't want to get rid of break armor, because there's a lot of enemies where getting rid of their shield is important as fast as possible. And if I get hit with him, I do more damage. So that's kind of fine. She's at 42 MP. Do I really need this, or is there something else I should be doing with her health, is what I can also ask. Could make her give us guaranteed CS, but eh. Just kind of okay. I'm going to make sure I save the game. I know we healed, but I also have a habit of canceling the save there. And okay, we did save. So let us proceed to here. What's that? It's a mana stone. This is the first one I've ever seen in person, too. Huh. If the Benevadon sealed within were freed, the whole world would be in such danger. Oh, I'm sorry. We're doing what we can to stop it, after all. Come on! Sylphid must be nearby! Oh, that reminds me. Whoa! Look at these footprints! Is someone else nearby? Let's check them out. Let's fix our item ring before we get too much further, or else I'm going to be very sad. So this, if I was level 18 here, I could upgrade. I could grind, but let's let's avoid grinding. Uh, let's go ahead and swap in. Don't need to put the enemy to sleep. We're gonna need earth elemental damage. I'm gonna put that at the bottom. I want a strength up. I'm gonna put that at the bottom. I probably want. I don't know if Luna Icon works on bosses. I don't think it does. I think any of these other ones matter. I could use a shadow eye. I'm going to, I'm going to reserve this for pro probably the door boss, honestly, or, or the ninjas. I don't think I want to use it on this fight. This fight isn't too bad. I'm just thinking about if there's anything else that I want here. I don't think so. Do you have any earth coins? No, I didn't pick up any randomly. Uh, in which case. I'm going to get rid of putting enemies to sleep randomly with giving me the ability to give another heal option for our party members. I think that's probably the best choice. Let's proceed to the boss. It's almost done. chat it's harpy time how much do i want to queue up on the enemy is the real question i'm asking myself let's try this Oh, it actually grabbed me. That sucks. Thank you, Twinkle Rain.
Alright, so we're doing some good damage. Ooh, she actually survived that due to her technique. That was actually kind of sick. So she had a 50% chance if she dies, she gets left at 1 HP, just for attack clarity. Look how much damage we just racked on the boss there. That was insane. So that was what I was talking about with the class cycling. Or, or slapping characters with the class strikes. That was massive damage we just dealt. Sadly, one of my buffs were off. So I'm going to have you reapply it. Okay, so I think we got some good control over our characters this time. Look at that damage we just racked on the boss. It's over. Let's go. Pretty much as soon as it lands again, it's dead. Goodbye. That was a convincing fight, chat. I was like, what, six levels under the boss? Get wrecked. I think I got hit twice. Oh, no double XP. That would have been so good. It's not bad. So if I had used the cookie, I would have been 2300 from leveling. That's not too bad. I could decide if it's worth getting the class upgrade here or not, I guess, next time. Sophie, are you all right? Ooh, you saved me. Who was that dark knight? I don't know. One moment he was looking at the mana stone, and the next he was after me. He drained my energy and summoned Hersephone. Wait, was that knight trying to release the mana stone? Selfid, we need your help. I see. Well, you all saved my life. I'll stick with you until the bitter end! Retain powers from the Wind Elemental Sylphid. Gamer, nice. So yeah, we, uh, we're taking advantage of the new mechanics. So now, now we have to learn how to play the game since we're playing at a higher difficulty. So it was kind of nice swapping into the different class strikes and cycling through. It was kind of neat. I wish we had defenseless. Defenseless was one of the best abilities from the last playthrough. That does so much extra damage and it lasts much longer than our elemental weapons. Now that Sylph is on our side, we can get into Citadel Laurent. Let's head to the Somnosa Meadow. Those agents from Navarro have overstayed their welcome. So I guess I have a decision to make for next time. Do I want to get into 10 battles just so I have the class upgrade and potentially save time there? Or do I go forward and beat an area that is clearly meant to have the class upgrade and suffer a little bit? I think we'll choose to suffer. <laughs> I'm leaning towards that. I really don't feel like grinding it out. If, that, if we had doubled the boss XP, I would have gladly have just leveled to 18. But since it didn't happen there, we did not get good RNG there. We'll save for now. I'll kill these enemies on the way through, though. Because this is basically free XP, because I'm going to heal regardless. So we should put ourselves at a point where another boss kill should put us at 18, which is okay. Let's take a little break here. Let's talk about how we feel the session went. Get a little reflection of the stream. So overall... 
Uh, I I set out what I wanted to do, sort of. We skipped part of a dungeon. I guess it's up to me if I feel like even doing that part of the dungeon. We got basically the good treasure from it, which was armor, because I'm on the, I'm not otherwise really going to pick up many, if any, upgrades between now and the end of the game in terms of armor. But I'll pick up accessories. Those could be useful to get rid of status ailments. Uh, we sort of saw points where maybe I could clip out of bounds. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to practice between here and Tuesday and see if I can showcase anything fun for the tr uh, the stream. But I'm glad we got a little bit of the first time experience. I've not done it before. I've not seen people do it before. We just kind of theorized. We do it in East. We do it in all these other games. Inevitably, we will go out of bounds. We're very close. We seem to have like the tech. We just need to find the spot. When we find the spot, we could go out of bounds. So I don't think I'll be doing that in terms of like, if we do go out of bounds, I don't think I'll generally proceed with it, but it's just kind of neat to show off. Because I do at least want to partially explore the dungeons. I'm okay with skipping the shortcut there, because the other thing is just a windy maze of nonsense. But in terms of, uh, in terms of showing things off, I have some practice to do. But anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the session today, as I have a few things planned for after the stream. But I think from that standpoint, uh, I'm happy with how it went overall. I'm a little sad we didn't get a full clip, but I'm happy too that we skipped half a dungeon. So I, good enough, I guess, question mark. And so far, I think we're on track with all of the little cactuses. I'll double check my count from the previous playthrough to now, just to double check. Uh, but I think we are good to go there. So our goal is basically to get to, I think it's 30 or 35 for the triple xp and then 50 for the ridiculous game breaking ability if we want to do any of the post game content so with that i guess we're gonna say goodbye to youtube so if you did watch to this point in the video or the vod i'd like to say thank you for watching hope to see you again in the next part